Last off, Danker and Sencho, I think I saw. They are! Oh oh. Danker, I don't know if you're still there. You're not too early. We uh, were too late. <laughs> no, we're not that late. No, not that late. Um, and then Sincho. I did say about half seven, half six anyway. Yes. Ish. But chat, if you're there, let me know if I'm too loud. <laughs> uh, did you go with the new um, layout this time, or are you still on the old one? What do you mean? Oh, on the 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 show the. the Twitch. Yeah. yeah, old layout because I don't think I like the new layout. I'm gonna do stuff to it. I want to. Okay. I want to give it more of an original flair, if that makes sense. Jaker says, "Caught me off guard. Had my back turned. You gave me a shock of my life." <laughs> Which is good because Max's game later is system shock. So we shocked your system, Danker. <laughs> oh, that's, I thought this one was a human shock. <laughs> there you go, human shock. Um, shock, shock, horror, horror, shock. Um, but oh, that's yes. another thing that we do need to do at some point anyway, is we need to get more stuff for a soundboard. Yes, I agree. Like, actually put them on the Discord so I can get use of them. Yes. Um. And yes, Sincho, it is earlier. Why is my stream deck not playing? Is it not connected? I'm going to be sad. Ooh, oh, no. there it goes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it is earlier tonight. today because it's. Uh, I wonder why. It's called a bank holiday Monday. I almost no, said Sunday. No. no, not even just that. It's just you know. Oh, because Max is going to be on later, and you are kidding me if I'm going to run into Max's show. <laughs> no, I mean there was once where I said to you, "Can we do a Can we do a Monday show?" And you went, "Can we be finished by nine? I said, "If we start at half seven, probably not." <laughs> Like, I must start earlier. <laughs> I couldn't. I was working. Yes, it's true. You were working um, on a holiday? No, not today. Oh, yes. No, the last time that we tried to do Oh, yes, that's true. Tis through, tis through. I mean, I, I could have done today if I wanted to, but I, no. I had other things to do. Yeah. Well, it's all good. I'll talk about that later. How is Chatty Chat? How you doing? And the levels. Are the levels fine? Oh, yeah. They good. How the levels be, yo? Um, Did you put it in Mags' chat? I did. My okay. old fuck. Not that anyone cares about that Twitter, but I still did it anyway. Well, that's good. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know what? Fuck it. It's just clearly not meant to be on Twitch. Well, on Twitter, on Twitter yeah. Um, hello, Nana. Asincho says, I'm doing. Uh, Denker says, level's fine. Nana says, I'm decent. Oh, hello, Mags. Yes, it hello. is. It's there, hence why I just appeared. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Oh, Asincho is redeemed. C -c Combo Breaker was sick. Watch all of it. Uh, I've watched the first half of the top eight of Street Fighter Six. I was watching a bit of it today. It was good. Very good. Danker says a wild Max has appeared. It's true. Ah, uh, Sanchez says redeem a glass of wine. Almost forgot the obligatory kickoff redeem. Yep. It may be a Sunday. No, it may not be a Sunday. But I still have wine. I have Monday but it, wine. But it's a drinking day regardless. Let's see it's a day that ends in Y, so that's why it's going end in wine. Let me see. Yes. Can you see what it says? Uh, Max says, sorry, been busy ripping EGX a new arsehole on Twitter and Insta. Yes. Oh, well, dear. Well deserved. Um, uh, <laughs> Nana said he saw one of them. I'm supposed to be doing things, but now Do I've things. got to go and re re watch that. Oh, yeah. Go look it up. Oh, go have a look. Um, you know. I've got to have a look. God and, damn it. And then St. Joseph's Tekken was amazing as well. Very hype. Yep, going to be... But, uh, chat, can you honest. see? You probably can't see, but it's okay. It says, fat bastard wine. So, that's what I'm having today. Some would argue... Nope, not going to go there, because I went to the gym today and smashed my workout. 
Well, we'll be talking about that later. Good day. I was going to say, oh, I did this last week. No, that's what the whole freaking intro is about. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sid Joe says, and I do not stand by this. Ooh, Sid- wow. Okay. Jesus. Oh, I haven't seen it. A- accurate. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Wait, I want to do chat first, then yes. Uh, Sancho okay. says, I felt spoken to when you said that name of the Y for some reason. No, Sancho, no. Uh, uh, that was me a year ago. <laughs> Brent said, bueno, bueno, Brent. Hello. Uh, Nana says, oh yeah, I started the gym this week. Ooh, excellent, Nana. Um, felt good, nice. but still a little anxious about things. No, that's understandable completely. Uh, Danger, well, something get oh, something getting smashed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cheers. But anyway, yes, Pete, read us what Mag said. So, uh, the tweet from EGX was, EGX returns October 25th to 27th. This year we're teaming up with MTM Comic Con. Tickets are on sale now. So Mag's put, <laughs> let me get this straight. You were charging £20 more for a weekend ticket than the previous years, but delivering one day uh, one day less, plus cramming it into a Comic Con. Absolute jokers, sort it out. Nice. Accurate, but fair. That's how that should go. Yes, right. I'm going to go and check the sound file. Two secs. Uh, Max says it was worse on Twitter. <laughs> um, yes, so go check out EGX Twitter, and I assume Max's Twitter. I don't know because I'm not on Twitter, but go check it out. And maybe Pete will screenshot it. But outside of that, how's everyone doing? I assume we are all... Actually, Sincho, you wouldn't have a bank holiday day. Uh, Max says, Probably yeah. Probably not, no. Max says, yeah, if you fancy a laugh. Um, uh, Max, I did actually read that from Twitter. Like, I didn't see oh, anything Twitter. more than that on the post, so... Mm. Uh, ah, wait, okay, hold on. Let me catch up. Danker said, crack that whip. They need their butts kicked. Yes, they do. They need the mirror of truth held up to their faces. And then everyone needs to go to Timeless and Format, where it's much better. Um, oh, Max says there were other posts. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to have to have a look. Yeah. Uh, since I have a holiday today, how... Wait, you have a holiday today. How? What holiday? I don't know. Well, it's African since you Took a day off so I can watch Combo Breaker in peace. Now there's a wise man right there. Uh, nice. Nana says EGX. I've done is, that in years. I know. Uh, EGX is probably gonna suck this year. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it sucked last year, so. Yes. Um. All right. We probably should get started because I am not going over Mag's stream. I haven't missed a stream, a mag stream in nine months. I'm not going to start tonight. (laughs) Hush falls over the crowd. Um, But yes, chat. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) Max says, now that's a record to be proud of, Kylie. I actually missed what you said. So what is the record? I have not missed a stream of Mags's, nor been late to a stream of Mags's in nine months. Um, it's impressive. I'd say so. Easy. It's very for me. stalkerish, too. Yeah, well, it ended up all right, though. Uh, <laughs> Some might say so. It ain't no Baby Ranger. I actually don't know what Baby Ranger is. I just know it's oh, about Oh, I keep stalking. hearing the talk of it. I know. I, I haven't. Want to watch it. It doesn't seem like it. it doesn't seem like my type of show. It's, it's not even just but, that. It's just like it's one of those. Oh, everyone's talking about it, so therefore it's gonna. <laughs> gonna I don't know. Be it feels absolute shit in it. It feels like it's gonna be ick factor. Anyway, Danker said had a bit of a chaotic weekend. Luckily, everything turned out good. However, my dog got pancreatic issues. Aw. Oh. And had to emergency be emergency rushed in. Well, hopefully oh, things not good. things ended well. I did see it in the Discord, but. People on the show haven't seen it, so we do hope everything ended well. Um, I hope so. So I'm still trying to get my levels right on the recording. So all right. Because we got to get started. Let's know, get it started. A, you've got two and a half hours, you know. We're oh not going to take that long, I don't think. You're going to give me a heart attack. 
I have never been late for history. I have left so many streams of my friends, and I'm like, see ya, gotta go. <laughs> Everybody knows where I'm going anyway. Um, Pretty much. Yes, yeah, Stanker says, everything is fine. That's good to hear. That is the most important thing um, for everyone. Now let's see what this, if I can get my soundboard to play, but Pete won't hear it. Let me see. He was no dragon. Fire cannot kill a dragon. <laughs> it was fire cannot kill a dragon, Pete. Um, <clears throat> do I have anything else cool? I haven't had anything else cool. Oh, good. I think Pete said good. everything's good now. Either okay. that or dog whistling to a certain community on on the internet. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> no, do you, do you remember when the I OK do, I do. Yeah, that's I, what I was. Just... I'm from Texas. God. I know it. <laughs> okay, I think we've that was got... a dumb controversy. It's all of every... you know what we are. This is a happy show with happy thoughts. Um. I mean, is it? Yes. I'm gonna make Later it happy. What? Later may not be. We'll talk about well, it. Though. I'm gonna make it be happy. Dang it! Uh, oh, toxic happiness right. for everyone. Okay. Sweet. Right. I'm gonna start the recording. Boom. Three, two. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rapid Reviews Radio Podcast Episode Two Zero One. I'm your co-host Kylie Wild. I am joined by my ever-present co-host on this bank holiday special, Pete Beckett. Wahoo! Hello, everyone. So, Pete, let's just get to the no, nitty-gritty. No, 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 no. I want you to start first this week. Why me? Oh, because you I've have a... a lot more to talk about. Okay, so how... Hey, how's your week been? How's my week been? My week's been amazing and wonderful. Um... Well, first, the not as wonderful part. Well, it's kind of wonderful, but I did bike a 10K, which is not as impressive oh, nice. as you think, but it kind of is. Um, no, that's that's fine. I know how difficult that can be, and especially <laughs> you hate cardio, so fair I enough. Hate, well done, you. I hate cardio so much, guys. It's not even funny. There's only one type of cardio I like. But speaking of which, seamless transition. The, be the best kind of cardio. <laughs> kind of cardio. But, 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 but something happened this week. Something that I don't usually talk about, and poor Pete knows more uh, better than anyone. Okay, yeah. Yep. Um, but yes. he knows better than anyone that I, as a woman of a certain age and a certain upbringing, do not celebrate my birthday. Um, and don't even talk about what the day is. I know. Now, even there. to the point at uh, WASD <laughs> where I showed you a post to do a release date, you went, That's my birthday. Oh, crap. Uh huh. It just popped out. But nobody knows it except for one person, and that one uh, two person. Two people, actually. Well, yes, you know it now. Um, <laughs> no, I knew it anyway. You told me years ago. I did. It's true. Um, but it's my birthday wine. Um, yes, no, a certain somebody who's in chat, who I hope's in chat. No, it's all right if he's not in chat. Uh, but... He made my birthday very wonderful and very special, and I cannot thank him enough. Uh, from the absolute bottom, top, and all around my heart. Uh, yeah, okay, so he's not there. Um, oh, no. He says as he writes it in the chat. He's not there, folks. Um, but, yes. Uh, so, I had a really effing awesome, so Pete doesn't have to censor that, uh, week last week. I could not, it could not have been better. I had a smile on my face for, like, the whole time and all the days and even now. Uh, so, ta-da! Oh, yeah, and then also we played Suicide Squad, but I think if it comes up tomorrow, I'll let Max handle that one, but that's only if it comes up. We might be coming towards the end of our Suicide it Squad It doesn't run. matter. We, we are a different show, and you need to, we may not have an overlap of audience, so you might want to actually tell the audience I'm just why. gonna, I'm gonna leave it on this cliffhanger. That we might be coming to the end of our suicide. Oh, damn it! You left me on a cliffhanger. <laughs> There's anyone now as well? For oh, two days. Okay. Well, he's not gonna mention it tomorrow anyway. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, no, I think we did the update, and it's the, like, second half of the battle pass or whatever. I, it's just... Okay, well, first... I serve this shit. First off, I do have to admit something. I'm an idiot. Mostly that. We know I am not very bright. And... You just realized this. Well, I know this. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I had a setting wrong and so we played for like an hour and it was kind of, sort of pointless, but not really, but kind of was. And that was my fault. I feel bad about that. I didn't have the current like playlist or whatever turned on. So that's the thing I've never experienced in all the live service games that I play and looter shooters that I play, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I kind of messed that one up, but then, <laughs> yeah, exactly, complete face palm thinker. Um, but even when we got it sorted, it didn't add much. Graphically, it has improved. Play-wise, not so much. Well, a game that's been out for three months has been graphically improved after launch. Well, I, when I Almost say... Almost like the game wasn't bloody finished. Well, I mean, that's just hands down. Uh, Max says, wasn't your fault. It wasn't explained. It wasn't explained. But still. Uh, Max says, still has the same issues gameplay-wise when it started. Yeah. Yeah, gameplay is not improved and stuff. Uh, Danker says, well, in that case, typical WB. Yes. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I mean, I am. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Might be taking on a different game at some point in the future. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, Sincha says, like graphics being the problem of that game. I know, exactly. It wasn't. Uh, it was all the other stuff. <laughs> And AI still wasn't reviving me. And yes, I die a lot. Uh, but, and, and Mags always outscores me at least double, if not triple, at times. So, there and, you go. And yet, when we were playing Destiny, it was always me I dying. I know, I know. It's weird, because, like, there's a part of me that wants to go, Mags, I'm really not bad at playing these games. You should see me on Destiny. But then... I'm really bad at this game. Yeah. I was going to say, well, until it came up to platforming section. Oh, my Destiny. gosh. But that's because I was using a tank. Ugh. But anyway. It's also because you don't play platformers. <laughs> oh, now that is too kind, Max says. Yeah, they fixed the AI, then broke it. Kylie is not bad at this game. You should see our scores. Our scores were bad to differ. Plus, every time I die, I lose half my scores. Of course. So, half my points. Um, and I, like I said, I die a lot. Anyway, it's not everything I played this week. I feel, oh, no, I played, uh, Little Kitty Big City, which I love when British people say that. You say, oh, okay. Little Kitty Big City is my favorite thing to hear. Um, <laughs> this got affectionately called by someone else on a, on oh? a podcast with uh, TCGS as, uh, Little Kitty Big Shitty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you on my shitty wall um anyway <laughs> how was it anyway because i've heard reference. all right okay things. well okay it is no untitled goose game it is no goat simulator it isn't bad and it's a quick and easy thousand gamer score well it's not quick and it's on game pass it's not quick it is on game pass i do find it cute because cats are cute mm-hmm. um Okay, I'm going to be honest, Anchor. See, I'm going to be honest, Brent. <laughs> Danker says short indeed. Uh, Brent says I beat Little Kitty in one sitting. Now, if I was going to just the end goal of the game to get back to your house, yeah, it wouldn't take that long. Probably two hours, maybe. Uh, <laughs> since just it's quick and easy, sounds like 10 out of 10 to me. Uh, <laughs> we all like it quick and easy. And short and sweet. Uh, but anyway. Um, Not always, actually. I see. Um, but. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh. There's so many little, like, things you have. They call them cat achievements. 
Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the cat achievements. Um, but one of them is like, throw 100 pieces of litter away. I'm on like 64. No, I'm on 70 yeah, now. Sounds, sounds like It's monotonous. tedious. It's tedious. Tedium. Uh, but if you're not doing that and you just want a little time waster, it, oh, oh, Sinji. Oh, good God. Sancho says... Can we get through this without being distracted no. by the chat? No. Love, love, love not. being distracted by chat. I know, I'm just saying. And I love puns. Sancho says, did you get that perfect score yet? No, not yet. But I'm on my way. Uh, <laughs> just takes me nine lives to get there. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, it's catastic, uh, and a catastrophe. Um, any more cat puns in there? I couldn't do it alone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, I haven't even started drinking yet. That is just Kylie brain raw. You have actually. Well, I had one glass, but, um, which is nothing. It's like water to me. Brent said, I got every achievement in that one. Uh, and that one, oh, did you? In that one sitting plus a short mop up the next day, a total of six hours played. I might actually be hovering around that point. Maybe. Uh, Cynthia said, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, Taker says, he's, or I, well, fishing for compliments. Yes. Um, always. Um, but yes, it's one of those games that I don't know how other people are. I'm, I have ADHD brain. So I can't do just one thing. Ha ha. Um, so I put that on and let's say uh, talk to Max or put it on and watch a thing uh, like an episode of Hannibal. Let's just say for the seventh rewatch. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's a it's a type of game where you put it on, but you're not thinking about it. You're just does that make sense? Just kind of wasting time. Yeah. Switch, switch, switch your brain off. Yeah. 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 Own. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Danker. Um, let's hop up here and then we all finish this off. But anyway, I do believe, with the exception of playing, what is that game called? Rocket Car? Is that it? Rocket League. <laughs> yeah, I saw that you were playing Rocket League the other day on the stream. Yeah, that was Community Night over at Mags. This is Danker was there. I know. I was going to join for a little bit and then saw oh. the full lobby. So I went, ooh, okay. You still should have. One of us could have stepped out. I could have stepped out. I was I was then very tired and thought, mm. yeah. Well, it's always fun. And I do like Rocket Car. Uh, I'm just not very good at it. Uh, and then Danker and I had matching cars. They were twinsies. It was so funny. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it just says Raw Kid Leak. Yes, Raw Kid Leak. Uh, Rocket. Are we gonna have to name the episode? That, like? Yes, yes, please, Pete. I think that should be called it. Ew! <laughs> Ew that is joke. pretty grim, even by your standards. AKA, so I'm reading that. I am AKA Burst. <laughs> Ew. Yes. Oh God. Sinjo, I think you've messed my brain up for the rest of my life now. Okay. There you go. There's a full title. <laughs> what, Rock Kid Leak, a.k.a. Birth? Correct. <laughs> oh, I am FG. Um, like, I have standards exactly, since Of course not. Uh, but I think that wraps up my week, which was fun and interesting mm. and totally, totally captivating. Captivating. Captivating? Anyway, Pete. What about you? Swing and a miss there. Ah, never miss. Ah, uh, <laughs> What about you? Yeah. Um, how's your week been? What you been up to? Uh, mostly uneventful week, uh, we'll say. But I have played a lot, which is why I wanted you to go first. So, yes, that's what she said. Um, so first of all, I'll start off with Street Fighter VI. Ah. So I went back to Street Fighter for the first time in a few months because Akuma launched. Right. Okay. Okay. How? So how? Thoughts? Feels? Uh, I I really like Street Fighter Six. I played I probably should, about yeah. an hour of it um, uh, the other night. I did a lot of the trials with with Akuma. He is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. He's 
had a lot of new additions, let's say, to his new his normal moveset and his combo game is really interesting. Right. But I still have a problem with having to pay for legacy characters as DLC. It's a little bit shady and a bit wrong, but they've done a lot of work to him and I think it's not justified, but right. it is still that a lot of work has gone in and I quite like the character, so mm-hmm. of course I was going to... I mean, I had the season one pass anyway from when I bought it, so... I didn't have to pay any extra for it, I guess. Right, okay. Um, I definitely will be going back and playing a bit more of it over the course of the next few months, I guess, because I think watching Combo Breaker over the weekend <laughs> has reinvigorated my want to play more Street Fighter. Right, okay. Um, the problem is with being an adult and having a busy year <laughs> this year, it's a yeah. lot of, lot of, not a lot of time to play anything when you can. Um which goes completely against my narrative when I say that I bought a game that I have played for several years, uh-huh. but I bought the Steam version oh, goodness. because I wanted to try something out. So uh, big shout outs to Sencho actually with this one because uh, we tried out a new, well, I say a new thing. It was something that was introduced by the community, uh, the fighting game community over Ooh. the course of lockdowns and all that so that they could right. actually play game um, tournaments online. Uh-huh but more in an offline setting. So uh, okay. the, pro- the application is called Parsec, and I'll tell you the game that we were using it with. So okay. essentially what it does is it logs in, like, so one person has the game, uh, you can then log in and basically play it as if you're playing natively on the other person's system. Right. There's a little bit of latency, tiny little bit of latency. Okay, because I was going to say, does that void the latency? Uh a lot more than actually having a game with really crappy netcode. Okay, right. So, and the game that I was uh, that we were trying this out with is very notorious for having very crappy netcode. What? Darren? Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom Three. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, me and uh, me and Sancho were playing. We we had a long set yesterday evening of playing Ultimate Marvel Three on PC. Um, I was remoting into his system for some reason, couldn't get mine to work, despite the fact. Um, so yeah, I think we played a, a handful of games, and my god, that game still rules. I still love it. It's still great. Yeah. So much fun. Um, and yeah, thank you to Sencho for actually picking the game up and playing it, and you know, probably actively encouraged him to go and buy it because it was cheap. And I think the message is that were happening after the fact he went why didn't i pick this game up sooner so yeah i think he's probably quite glad that he played it now ultimate marvel is like one of those hypest as hyped like fighting Ah, games right and i've played it so much over the years but i haven't played it for quite a long time because one the netcode absolutely sucks like it's hard to go and get games on it even with the remastered one that they released on um xbox one and ps4 right they just didn't improve the netcode in any way shape or form so um so it was nice to actually play it well with someone online it was quite cool that is very interesting so, also hello yeah, friend it, of the show mike yeah hello mike, mike Pendo. Pendo. um it was best friend yeah so it does also it does also work with other games so i think it works okay. with the original marvelous capcom games like the um there are quite a few on there i can't remember the list in which uh, is enabled with parsec but i'm sure it's probably quite extensive but i'll just have to look into the ones that have a really crap net code and do it that way instead okay interesting so well uh hear back mm-hmm. more in the future about more games played via parsec <laughs> well, there you go Tune in. So, however, mm-hmm. uh, there is one big game that I have been playing, and what uh, could it I've, be? Uh, uh, I've been playing Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door Remake. No way, no Pete! There. I'm totally shocked and appalled, but not really. Also, thank you, Pete, for trying to help the other night. Um, I tried. You did. That's Considering very... it was a game I haven't played in yeah. probably nearly 15 years, I That's muddled true. my way through. I guess in yeah. trying to help. Um, yeah, Mag said he didn't see that coming, of course. Yep. Uh, um, Mike, oh, I know that game! <laughs> uh, so I'll give the small brief uh, primer to anyone who doesn't know. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is a remake of the 2004 game from the GameCube. Um, 
uh, made by intelligent systems back then is kind of redone by them I guess uh, with new visuals new music basically the same game just with a new coat of paint um, what do I think of it well considering that thousand year door is one of my favorite RPGs of all time right because, one because and it's simple and two because I don't play RPGs I was gonna say Pete does not like RPGs that should be noted um, so I had very high expectations of what this was going to be, considering that they absolutely knocked it out of the park with the Super Mario RPG remake as well. Right. Now, I still love the game. I really do. What I love most about it is the actual gameplay itself. But this remake has lost a hell of a lot of the charm of the original game. Really? Which is really disappointing. Okay. So, um... <laughs> Like I said, the game is still fun. Like it's still really enjoyable. It still plays exactly the same way as you remember it from okay. the two, from two thousand and four. The music, my god, was one of my favorite elements of the original game, and my god, if they absolutely ruined it with <gasps> the new remix, really they are horrifically bad at times. Okay. Oh my god, it is not good. It's not good. Wow. Okay. But considering you can go very early on, I'm a bit disappointed with this. This should have just been an option um, to just be able to have the, the old music. No, you have to wait until you get into Roadport's main town and then go and find the bad shop to actually enable the old music for a cost. Is that what Which the... is a bit crap. Is that what the GameCube is that's for yep. sale? Oh, okay. Yep, that's, it's cost one coin. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah, so that you can change the music. It doesn't cost you any oh. badge points, which is good. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the fact that you have to pay for it using a coin is well, still not great. It should have just been a toggle toggleable option. Well, Max says, uh, wow, I was not expecting this. Me neither. Uh, Danker also said, wow. And then I know there is an in-game currency purchase for GameCube one coin, which is, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly what we're saying. So, yes. Wow. Uh, Centris is almost as bad as paying for music with drive tickets and SF6. That is true. That is absolutely <laughs> true. It's disgraceful. I haven't done any of that, but they shouldn't. Um, my main issue is, like I said, there's a lot of a lot of the charm missing from this. So now, what is it? Though? Tiny little things that just is it a graphical really thing hurt. or a writing thing or no? Actually, like weirdly, so one of them. I'll get to in a minute. Okay. And it's a major. It's more of a major gripe. Okay. Uh, the minor gripe is is there are some sound effects and a few little charming aspects that were missing. So, um, one of the things that you can do when you're battling is uh, interactable objects. So, audience members might throw things towards right. you. Right. Okay, I do remember that. Yes. So when in the GameCube version, you used to hit them, and they would sort of do a little scream as they flew away away from the screen they've got rid of that right okay i don't know why it seems very very pointless to get rid of that yeah don't know but i always quite liked it and it's just just one of those little things that just gets rid of the original charm that the game had right okay um some of the sound effects are missing um right. which is really weird so um that is weird when uh, there is a partner. I don't want to give too much away for everyone who may not have played the game like originally. There is a partner in Chapter Three, which is where I'm currently at at the moment, who, when you interact with them, makes a little sound as they do their partner action. Right. Okay. Used to, which now no longer happens. So right. very weird that they've not included these little nods, considering it's supposed to be a faithful remaster. It's not exactly faithful. Right, interesting. Uh, yeah, Mike Tindo says, "Color me intrigued." Uh, now, Mike Tindo, did you also play the original, or is that only a Pete only thing? Mm. Um, I, well, played I played the original. It, I, yeah, I played it three times back in the day. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, Mike says no. Okay. Ah, okay. But so, see, mm -hmm. okay. So my major gripe of this is um, Never the. Right. The game itself right. okay. is running at 720p, 30 frames per second. Oh, here we on go. Switch. Yes. Via the dock. 
Okay. It runs at um, six, seven, six something. Um, 648? 30 frames. 648, 30 frames, handheld. I've not played it handheld, I've only played it docked. Right, okay. Now, if I was to go and play this via an emulator, such as Dolphin, yes, I could play this natively at uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second, and yes. it was also capable of doing so on the original GameCube as well. Yes. With, uh, <laughs> you know, with a um, piece of hardware. Um, because there is, a, you are able to mod the GameCube to run yeah. 1080p graphics. So it is completely perfectly able to actually play fully hd in a better resolution than playing the switch version uh centro says gamecube is greater than switch <laughs> i guess for that uh mike says but have played paper mario 64 uh super paper mario color splash and the origami king wow okay hmm that is wild to me. Um, again, we've said this repeatedly, and I'm going to say this repeatedly. I don't see anything above 30 frames per second, so I don't care about the frames. But that is me and my weird eyes. Um, no, it's just for me. It's just, like I said, it's a major gripe. In the a lot of people, I though. I can play this another way for, <laughs> diff you know, I can play it on another system that was a lot older. No, that, no, that, yes. And be able to enjoy it just as little bit more i do think that that's notable uh danker says i know there is a 60 fps mod for switch however it means going down dark means to apply it yeah no thanks uh, i don't want to break my, ta break my switch trying to do so mike tendo says that's poor and living in a caravan at the time of its release sencho sencho says excuses excuses oh, all you had to do is steal one. one can't be that hard <laughs> oh mm. goodness um Oh, he does. Yeah, that. I mean that's the thing. So true. don't don't get me wrong. It's not to say that I'm not enjoying the game because every time I'm trying to get an opportunity to play it, I'm still playing it. Yeah. Because I want to see it through. Because I've been wanting to play this game again for about ten years, but never really had the proper means to do so. I, really... I am not paying a hundred and twenty quid to go and play this natively on a GameCube. I mean that makes sense. Um, although I'm pretty sure I have it. Uh, but I'll tell you what. I meant to show mm. you today, but guys, I will show you this next week. I have this amazing handheld that I have bought. Is it the Ambonic? It is. <laughs> and it is every singer, singer, every singer uh, emulator mm -hmm. and all of the games that legally purchased yeah. and I legally own. Of course. Backed up, of course, mm -hmm. from your extensive totally. collection. To be fair, though, I do have an extensive collection. <laughs> uh, and I haven't even really <laughs> drank anything. I've only had two glasses. Um, but it is amazing. It is amazing. Like, I have PlayStation games on a handheld. Uh, thank you. Mm. So I'll show it off next yeah. week. I will show it off Don't next week. Don't you worry. I will be making sure that I back up my extensive PS2 collection to play uh yes for an emulator soon that's right definitely do that uh mm. i love having all my games I'm... backed up <laughs> yeah it was annoying actually because i was looking into like trying to play a few more other retro games of course and i own a backwards compatible ps3 but yet for some reason the dualshock 3 doesn't seem to work with ape escape Oh, interesting. Because of, because of a weird thing to do with the European version of the game. Oh, that's Thanks, weird. Europe. That's weird. I'm going to redeem a glass yeah, of Yeah, so I now um, have, gonna have to back up my copy and play it via um, uh, PSX. Um, yeah. Uh, Mike says only two. So here's the funny thing about the GameCubes that I own. So one of them is mine. It's the purple one. Kind of your standard typical one. Apparently the other one is the guy I take care of. He gave it to me, and apparently it's white, and that's some kind of like limited edition. Oh yeah, uh, is it? I own a white GameCube controller, and I had to import it from Japan. Right. Okay. Well, this is a white GameCube and a white game controller. Yeah, that would probably be that, and the some okay. orange one would have been Japanese. I will check and see. But anyway, yeah, he just gave it to me. So I was like, because he knows I collect Damn. old uh, retro consoles. But anyway, 
Uh, <laughs> Citra says, the Steve Jobs GameCube. It's true. I think that was back when everything was black. Remember that? The GameCube was special yep. because it was colors. But all yep. of our, all of our everything was black. It wouldn't be white until 2006 yep. when the iPhone dropped. The first iPhone. I'm sure you probably have seen it. The um, there was a GameCube <laughs> that was made by Panasonic. The, the i GameCube is what Mike says. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was it. The Panasonic Q. I have to look that one up. I may need that. I really want to get my hands. And this is not difficult to um, do. What? I was going to say. Good luck with that. They're quite rare. Are they? I like that. The rarer the also, better. Uh, they also have a notorious failure rate as well. Yeah, but I'm rich. Um, so True. one thing. But it that... was the only GameCube that actually played. I've seen one in mm-hmm. person. They are spectacular. I would. I, I wanted they're one of these real things. And they're real and they're spectacular. They're the only GameCube that plays both GameCube games and DVDs. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, I need to look into this. My nerd senses are tingling. Um, but I really want to get a Famicom. Just to have. Uh, yeah. So do I. Um. But anyway, Pete, we should probably continue with the show because I still want to make it over to Max's show. I know. I've just sent you a link to that so you can have okay, it later. Okay, perfect. I will entertain my nerd systems later. Um, yes. Yeah, exactly. Mike says, and this never caught on, blasphemy. Uh, yeah, because it wasn't. I remember being freaking blown away. Was it the PS1 that played DVDs as well? PS2. Was the PS2? I just remember going. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it, this is amazing. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, Pete, you should tell us what the show is about and then we should do the show. Uh, well, and I'm going to drink news. more wine. Well, we're going to do news, so obviously. Um, so we'll, where do I start? The beginning. Some of this is just weird news. In the world, it doesn't matter what, what way I start. I, I like weird to- Okay, fine. Let's um, let's discuss, shall we? And I'll okay. ask you this question first. Okay. Do you ever feel robbed about a reveal coming through data mining? Oh, good question, Pete. And I am a person who does not like spoilers in any form. So yes, when data mining does happen, I try to avoid it as much as possible. Because also, <laughs> on top of that, I have a brain that is very much like Sherlock Holmes. It can put things together. All I need is a little tiny hint and my brain will go and form an entire picture. And it's 99% of the time it is correct. So I hate any type of data mining details or spoilers because I can usually form a full picture. So yes, Pete. Uh, Yeah, don't read that comment from Mike Tendo. I have a comment after this one. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, data mining. Uh, it's become a bit of a subject this uh-huh. week because mm. from VGC, right. director of Multiverses. Does everyone remember what Multiverses yeah. is? Yeah, isn't that coming out next week? Because we're supposed to play it's it in being Max's... Re-re- yeah, it's being re- re-released next week after being in early access. I have uh, so many thoughts. Year. So many thoughts on Multiverses, but I will keep them to myself. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The director of Multiverses says data miners do a, quote, disservice to the players by revealing characters and stages before they're officially announced. Oh, see, I'm not into that at all. So, during the game's original run, most of its uh, upcoming characters were revealed by data miners who trolled the game's code for placeholder data and newly added assets. Um, for example, voice lines for the Joker recorded by Mark Hamill were found in the game's data back in see? September of 2022. Uh, the character so was only just officially announced earlier this month for his return on uh, tomorrow, as you do li- today, as you listen to this uh, May, yeah. May twenty eighth. Sorry. Um, in a recent interview with VGC, we asked um, Multiverse's director Tony Nia. Oh, how do you <laughs> pronounce that? That works. Uh, um, how he felt about data mining and whether any measures have been put in place to avoid this happening this time around. A lot of things, he replied. <laughs> uh, it it is an arms race, so it will be a constant protect. Uh, so it will be constant protections against new and creative ways to data mine. At the end of the day, we've done a lot, we've learned a lot, but again, it is an arms race. Arms is a different game. Won't, uh, won't ever be leaks or anything like that, but on our end, 
uh, we've done, I think, above and beyond what industry standards and protections there are. That being said, everyone's very creative and they're, uh, they're just very, very smart. We're reacting. And we oh, put dear. a lot of stuff in place and I'm just continuously <laughs> impressed by their level of ability to get through things. Uh. Um, so um, VGC then go on to suggest that studios may see the efforts of data miners are both impressive and and depressing, to which he agreed. He said, that's right. I mean, yeah, there's this. Uh, it's a disservice to the players, honestly, that these things are ruined and it's deflating for the team as well. But most importantly is... I wouldn't use the word depressing. It's just unfortunate for the players. They don't get the grand reveal that uh, that we have planned, and a lot of air is sucked out of the room. But these things happen, so we're trying to prevent them from occurring in the future. Well, first off, what Mike says, which I do like, which is Multiverses, the game that came out, tanked, was removed, revamped, reannounced as Multiverses 2. Then they dropped the 2. The marketing for this game is bizarre. Yes, it is. I can't really believe we're playing it next week, but hey, that's cool. Um, and then, Pete, you missed it, but you said Arms Race, and I was like, Arms is a no, I'm game. No, fully, I'm fully <laughs> aware. I heard... So I was, I was just trying to get through the fact <laughs> I know. that the, the, the director clearly doesn't speak native English. No. And that translation is not great. I, um, yes. Uh, oh, Nana redeemed a mod poll. Go for it, Nana. You're the mod. You do it. Um, it's going to be about multiverses, I guess. Probably. But it's okay. Whatever it's about, uh, Nana can do it. Uh, Hey, so yes, Mike really likes ARMS. Uh, although I have no issue with ARMS. Haven't played it in an age, though. Uh, Sindra says, I was even more confused when I saw Multiverse's characters where in some ice hockey ad or whatever on Twitter. Oh my gosh. What? Uh, I have what, thoughts about Multiverse's. What am I getting myself? I have thoughts, but Pete, they're unrelated to the actual game. There was an event around Multiverse's that you don't remember that hurt my feelings very much <laughs> that involved, no, I'm, that involved yes, I'm a previous co-host no i'm fully <laughs> aware i remember don't you worry <laughs> so i it, remember getting those messages yep so it has a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth but we'll see you next week totally new reality <laughs> good luck because the game absolutely <laughs> sucks ass yeah um well it's not oh, that's um, it may be great the game is that i don't think the game's that fun to be honest or was when it was in early access well it's interesting i just didn't i didn't like the two two v two like tethering right to it. it was kind of crap uh so but i just maybe if i just want to play this single like like without a team can i just do that well see, okay very valid point actually um Oh, Sindra says, I only feel bad for some of the people working on multiverses because they're good FGC people. See, it's Correct. funny you say that because that's actually how I feel uh, about Suicide Squad. Um, there are good developers and writers on Suicide Squad. And they're not going to get the credit. And who knows if they want to put it on their CV when, you know, as they move on. But yeah. they're good developers. They're good writers. They're good everything. They just have to follow what the, the, the powers that be say. Um, Sincho says, I like the team aspect. Dinker says it might survive post a year. It will be interesting. Uh, Mike Tindo no. says, it's not a terrible game, but it's no Smash. Nothing is Smash. Um, and that that is like, that's not just a kind of... Oh, you know. God, yeah. What the hell is that? What is it? Oh, it's the link that Sincho sent. Oh. It's literally multiverses NHL, NHL face-off, and it's... Uh, how Batman, weird! Uh, Bugs Bunny, Velma, and Steven Universe against oh two my gosh. ice hockey players. That is like that is weird as hell. Um, let's see. I will play it after relaunch. I'm answering the poll um, because I'll be playing it next week in Mags's channel, possibly, unless it's like a full lobby. It'll be funny though, guys. I know I'm hyping another channel, but it will be funny to watch me play a fighting game. <laughs> been trying to get you to play a fighting game for years i know only max can get me to um <laughs> but oh it's this week uh because i forgot today's monday not sunday yep <laughs> correct but um <laughs> 
Killer Instinct, Kylie, yeah. Watch me just Don't kick worry. everyone's tail. Boop, 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 boop. Don't worry, Sencho. I got your message. I am downloading Killer Instinct. Oh, goodness. Um, But yes, uh, Nana says they somehow managed to piss off comic video game and basketball fans at the same time. Um, yep. That is hilarious. But anyway, so come check out Mags' channel this week in two days' time. If you want to watch me play a fighting game, possibly. If the lobby isn't too full. Uh, I'm a button basher for any of those who need to know. The only game I'm oh, good at... Oh, that's really going to go you very far with that game, trust me. Well, the only fighting game I've ever been good at in my entire life, and still am, is Mortal Kombat. It is my preferred fighting game of choice. Anyway, Pete! Continue anyway, on. Well, I have thoughts about this. And I oh, agree go for it, yeah. Them. I do actually agree with them. Um, based on someone who has sat there and listened to... Or followed a lot of fighting games over the years i have been robbed several times over Ooh. of brand reveals especially yes Smash reveals i forgot that was our original <laughs> thesis yes oh my god yes it's uh i mean data mining is a thing that's going to happen but if you if you actively keep code in there for something that's coming in the future then you kind of have no choice but to expect it to be leaked right it, we live in we live in an age of leaks and data mines and all that yeah you have to be a bit more secure when it comes to that sort of thing i mean i i still remember the day that i was at a smash tournament um for smash for wii u and that was the day that we found out that ryu lucas and roy were being revealed because of a fucking data mine i hate it data was mining. ridiculous on the day of a tournament and two days before its grand reveal mm -hmm. as well and it was like oh all these people were playable yeah great wonderful that's just robbed us of our like of yeah. this amazing reveal we would have got. I love, and then they unceremoniously mm -hmm. just got released just because of it. Yeah, like, oh, well, great. that's the thing that happened. And to be fair, that is what I've heard back way back when uh, Fallout Four was going to be revealed. I remember all those leaks. Oh yes, every leaks were single constant. one of them. The guy that did the main very confusing leak, he set up an entire website with a countdown timer and everything his mm -hmm. logic was i thought this would make them re-release the game faster well f you dude <laughs> because it didn't and now right. you've got all these people like he revealed the boston locations he revealed like some he revealed the map yeah like he revealed the map the whole Just script key... yeah exactly and it was like i love to be especially where, where games are concerned maybe not real life but where games are concerned i love to be surprised i mm -hmm. love organically experiencing the experience as silly as that sounds yeah um i just like i i just i don't get it I don't, i'm never gonna get it i don't understand data miners i don't understand leakers but this is the problem. We live in an age where it's like first and fastest, isn't it? Like we, we that's have the to thing. get everything out. And that's it's like, well, actually, can't we just have our reveals? And, can't we just be patient? Well, and then, like, that then goes into press, as we said, games journalism. They want to be first at the post or whatever the frick it's called. And so they're like, oh, this person data mined. Well, now I'm going to go wine dine 69 them. Ha <laughs> ha uh mm -hmm. and get them so it's like um it's a, a a parasitic almost a host and parasitic yeah. relationship with each other and that's what encourages yeah. these leaks and encourages these 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 uh, data miners and i just i i can't get behind it's not fair no. um Danker's, no i agree mm -hmm. Danker says if you're going to data mine at least cryptic the clues details well, that's what i would love them to do but they're that's not they want that ego stroke is what i think yeah. um sencho says uh entire sf uh, sf6 uh cast all dlc characters was leaked before it was even released uh uh yeah that was actually not long after the initial reveal oh well it was like the re-reveal you remember that really terrible logo reveal they <laughs> i do remember that pete we talked about they, it then they yeah, and then they re-revealed mm -hmm. the game, like with some of the gameplay. It was literally minutes after that trailer that the whole entire cast 
I remember and that. The first season of DLC was leaked. Wasn't that around? We the... went into extensive mm-hmm. details about it as well. Yeah, because there was also a Capcom leak as around that same time. Yeah, well, that's where it was. Okay, well, um, since it says whatever can happen will happen, can't do anything about these people. Same with cheaters. Exactly. Uh, Danker says, for instance, when Pokemon Scarlet, yes, and Violet was announced, the Riddler leaker did everything in clues, yes, but you can still figure out stuff, but I totally get what you're saying. Like, yes, if you're going to do it, do it with clues. I kind of get that. I, I kind of do. Yeah, I get um, it. says, they didn't redo the really terrible <laughs> Luke face game cover, however. This is oh, true. Oh, it's one of the worst game <laughs> covers I've seen in a long time. It's true. That's why I got the special edition on PS4, PS5, sorry, because it is actually a yes. decent enough cover. Uh Mike's Tindo says there's literally no point trying to be first and foremost as a small news outlet. Google shift. Oh, oh, I'm about to read what Mike's saying. I have so many thoughts on that, but I will keep it very brief. We do that another show on it. Yes. We do need to cover AI. We will do. Yeah, it's, it's time for sure. Google's shift to using AI has totally sunk small outlets now. I will say this. I will keep it. Very, very brief. The fact that Google has shifted to AI for its dadgum search results is a freaking joke. I almost cussed. It's a freaking joke. Um, (laughs) Nope. You know, I'm going to shave it for, I'm going to save it for a different show. You're going to shave it. I'm going to shave it. I'm going to shave it for a different show. Uh, But I am absolutely 100% a so against this it has ruined google search go do duck duck go uh it says i think that wasn't code that was another thing that happened possibly uh and then Centro says this should be an emote on twitch and puts a link that i can't look at yeah it's, uh, um it's the luke cover art face oh yes definitely nana says they will change we it back get that. yeah they will change it back soon. We're going to definitely do a roundtable discussion on AI, especially with Google using AI. Yeah. I have so much to say about that. I'm angry. I'm livid. Uh, no, no, about you're coming it. on for that. I know you have strong thoughts about the use of AI. Oh, yeah. So it affects you're his industry. On you like it or not. I know it does. So, mm. um, you, you mentioned something to do with parasitic uh, relationships. relationships. Yes. Shall we move on to this story then? Sure. Which is. Game and Network, the family of games mm. media brands, including Eurogamer and GamesIndustry.biz, yes. has been acquired by IGN Entertainment. It has. This is very true. I do want to talk about this, but go for it, Pete. Oh, so did I. So, <laughs> UK-based games media company has been acquired for an unknown sum from Reed Pop, the PAX and New York Comic Con organizer, uh, which acquired it in 2018. Wow, the, the news for Reed Pop keeps getting worse. Um, almost like they might be in trouble. Anyway, um, the news was shared on Tuesday, so um, along with confirmation that the acquisition would result in redundancies across the organization. Events such as EGX and MCM <laughs> will remain with Repop. Yes, as Max just said, and yet they didn't buy EGX. Dang it. <laughs> Lol. No, I'll just say it. God damn it. Well, you have to mark that out. Um No. And then uh, Nana says, I hate IGN. I have lots of thoughts on IGN. Uh, which Max says, we'll get to those. I would have loved them if they bought EGX. Uh, hmm. Interesting thoughts okay. there. Uh, right, anyway, should I carry on and then we'll get to these? Yes. Although in a minute. I do have to tell Mike, I absolutely agree with him. But yes, continue on. No, read that one. Okay. <laughs> Mike Tindo says, it's be- it'll, make, it'll give context to this yeah. in a minute. Uh, it's become the embracer. Uh, oh, it's become the bracer group of media outlets. Yes, one hundred percent. I agree. Because game and get, yep, game and networks publications include GamesIndustry.biz, Eurogamer, Rock Paper Shotgun, VG Twenty Four Seven, and Dicebreaker. The business also holds shares in Outside Xbox, Digital Foundry, and Hookshot, which operates Nintendo Life, Push Square, P- uh, Pure Xbox, and Time Extension. I don't um, like this. Uh, I forgot that half of these places even existed anymore. I am aware of half of them because we use them and also outside Xbox. And also, Max just said, I'm worried for outside Xbox now. Yes, I am too. But it is only shares they own. But that's where they start. They still have, 
they still have will may have some sort of voting right though. That's where it starts. That's uh, where the problem is. Is it, they may hold shares, but whether or not they have a controlling aspect within board decisions. They will soon. Ooh, that makes me angry. I mean, uh, yeah, but that's but you will know as well as anyone, obviously, to do with stock market stuff. Um, is that you can hold shares, but you don't have a yes. voting majority or no. you don't have a voting right. But Absolutely. actually, it's whether or not they've bought shares to hold a voting That's right. That's the thing. If you remember correctly, uh, Musk bought voting shares in Twitter slash X before he actually bought over X. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to say, Nana said, also, congrats to Yes Before Relaunch, one with 40% of the votes. I was one of the ones that voted that because I'll be playing it in two days' time over in Max's channel. Please come check it out. How many, like, shout-outs have I given Max? Like, six? All too many. Never. It's never too many. Anyway, Pete, continue on. Uh, well, that's basically it. So okay, good. Let's talk about talking it. Talking about how Gaming Network was formed in 1981. But yeah, anyway. No, who cares about um, that part? So, first of all, like, Eurogamer, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, VK247, right. Dicebreaker, and GamesIndustry.biz. Whilst we did use GamesIndustry.biz last week for one of our stories, yes. we haven't used those as publications for quite a while. And also, the um, public perception of those enterprises have been fairly low over the last couple of years, in all honesty. Right. People have not seemed to care about them for a long time, especially VG twenty four seven. I... They're incredibly crappy reporting of most things. Although we do use them a lot. <laughs> no, we don't. But I've... no, I've for the last two years I have blanket refused oh, to okay. use any article that they have actually publicated. Publicized. Okay, well that's very good. They are crap. Um, they are complete crap. I have several things to talk about. Uh, yeah. Also, um, I. I, I... I, I agree with Mag. Sorry, the fact no, that go I ahead. do worry about Iter outside Xbox. Like, yeah. Whilst I'm not a fan of them, like per se, where I watch their stuff or anything, they're great. But I'm yeah, not, no, it's because I'm not. If that's not yeah, your thing, it's care. not your thing. Yeah, it's fine. Care about Xbox? That's the problem. Oh, that's I right. I I don't give a crap about Xbox. Most that's of the games that come out on Xbox are crap anyway. Oh, um, but yes, I know what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> well, they haven't actually had a release in a while, and look how badly Hellblade 2 seems to be doing at the moment. Oh, uh, yes. Lots of thoughts so, about yeah, that. So, yeah, it's it's not sunshine and roses for Xbox. No, it's not. I, I we talked about for, that last week. For, yeah, for Two the outside ago. Xbox people, I do worry about them, because they're a great there's clearly little a team. contingency of people that, that enjoy their content, they're... whilst I personally don't. I just, I, I worry that the IGN are going to come in and just rebrand them as IGN Xbox or something. We'll see. There are throw. First of all, I'm I've got like three branches going. Let me just say, Sincho says my fave PR term this year is quote restructuring. Exactly, hundred percent behind that. Uh, outside Xbox is a throwback to the time where well, I know I personally was watching so much yeah Xbox content on youtube like so much um because i was in GameSpot, uh old ign um just just all i was like obsessed i do think that we're moving on from that which is sad but life does carry on we do you know move on to the next big thing or whatever um but x outside of xbox still has that feeling of what it felt like back in 2016 uh to be an xbox fangirl um unapologetically you know i've i've always been unapologetic about that on here um mm -hmm. and i do worry that <laughs> i'm going to agree with sincho sincho just said the next big thing being mags absolutely go to follow yeah, his channel yeah 8.5 mm -hmm. ah! um but whew, distraction but anyway um i i miss those days i do want to see more content like that um and it does make me a bit nervous with ign buying it over like GameSpot before it was bought by nbc which is a, a, a an american television station uh game spot was very very similar to, to the way outside Xbox is now, which is just very, mm -hmm. I don't know, like like raw, like authentic. 
authentic uh, response. I say that. I mean, yes, they did kiss up to to advertisers. Yes, that was very apparent at certain times. But overall, their Let's Plays and everything like that. I mean, that's Danny O'Dwyer um, and, and, and that whole generation. Um, oh, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, Max knows all their names. Uh, anyway, um, it was all very, very authentic content, um, which is how I feel outside Xbox is now. But... Actually, Max says just to state that outside Xbox are also also seven years ago brought outside extra, which covers VR, PlayStation, Switch, and PC. That's amazing. So they now cover more than Xbox stuff on both channels. They are very talented people, but I do worry. Exactly. I'm I'm echoing this uh, with this diatribe I'm on. I'm echoing the same fear is that we are seeing it less and less. Um, GameSpot was uh, bought over by NBC Television. Their content degraded and went uh, down, down, down. I fear that this is going to happen with outside Xbox. And yes, 100%. I do wonder if this is why Luke left. That was my first thought exactly, Max. Um, yeah, I think it had to be. But anyway, I wish corporations would stop buying smaller venues because that means there's no more, like, authenticity left. And that's the whole reason that I watch less plates and watch these smaller... I say smaller, but you know what I mean. Smaller venues. Um, and why I'm switching more to Twitch nowadays. So. Also, you do wonder when someone's going to step in and go, hang on, don't they have a publishing monopoly at some point here? That's the first thought. It's the publishing monopoly. I hate monopolies. Um, I won't go into the very boring part of that. <laughs> um, but I hate monopolies. And the idea that someone could have, much like the Embracer group, as was mentioned earlier, could have their finger on all the pulses of the, uh, you know, grassroots Xbox media. I don't like that. It does not sit well with me whatsoever. Sinjo mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> says, I hate Monopoly 2. Worst board game ever created. Uh, exactly. Mike Tindo just hit the nail on the head. There is no independent journalism. We have lost independent journalism, which is ironic because it really took off a few years ago. But now everyone is buying up the independent journalists. And that's why we have crap like Kotaku. Yeah, I said it. Bite me. Um... <laughs> But, yeah, yeah, but then again, we also had crap such as VG247, and yet they still get bought out. Why? Mm. They should have shut a long time ago. Oh, I just want... Also, Polygon still exists. Oh! Mm, mm, give me some grassroots... Exp uh, well, grassroots video game journalism. Uh, but Nana said, my beef with IGN and a lot of the bigger sites is that they don't do a good job covering the smaller stuff. Exactly. I should start an indie publication. Anyway... Uh, Dager says, that's what I said. Why hasn't competition stepped in similar to the Microsoft deal last year? I think because I could be wrong, but I think because journalism isn't seen as big as a moneymaker, let's say, as gaming publishers. Because Didn't matter. You don't make a lot of money in journalism. You just don't. It doesn't matter. They should, it doesn't, still should but be scrutinized as I, much as any industry. I agree. 100%. I'm just saying that's probably why. I know. Um, Nana says again, how is this not illegal? Lol, exactly. Uh, Sencho, now we have independent... Oh, independent journalism. Yeah, he's not wrong. Uh, it's what most people now like to call access media. Oh, don't get me started. Um, for those who don't know that my university degree is journalism. Uh, that's what I went to college for in the U.S. Um, Mike says, uh, too many giant media sites under the same banner, which will now all be governed under the same agenda. Now, see, okay, let's go back to 2016, where Kotaku was owned by Dead, was it Deadspin? Is that the right name? Uh, Deadspin Media? Uh, yeah, it was Deadspin, and then it was bought out by Gawker Media. Yeah, yeah, it? Gawker was after, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and all of the sites um, that were included in that were a big, it was a big bunch, because, like, Jalopy was in there, and 
some feminist yeah, site yeah. that I can't yeah, remember. Then, yeah, because after Gorka, it was G&I Media, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you had all these sites, and it is exactly as Mike just said. They were all under the same banner. They were all built with the same CMS, uh, which is Content Management System. So they all looked mm-hmm. very, very similar. They all had the same advertisers and blah, blah, blah. And they all carried the same exact agenda. And they carried the exact same articles, just slightly worded differently as well. Yes, exactly. That's not journalism. I'm trying not to go on a rant here because I am a journalist. I'm a certified, bona fide yep. journalist. But holy crap, people, that's not journalism. When you are being bought out by your advertisers, that's not journalism. You're no, that's a content. paid for media. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 a money making scheme, and and we're the 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 marks. Uh, Nana says yes, I can mm-hmm. say that's probably the reason. And then Nana says, yeah, a lot of podcasts I follow have just said that games journalism is kind of like just a PR wing at this point. It a hundred percent is, and I will yep. always. I did this last week, and I mean, I'm sorry, I'm on a soapbox. <laughs> this is my 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 expertise. I did this last week, and I'm gonna say it again. Kane and Lynch. I will never forget that. I lived through that. Kane and Lynch, for those who don't know, was a game that was terrible, but they paid. This is before Gamergate. They paid for the review, and I believe it was IGN. They paid for the review to be a 9 out of 10. Yep. They paid for it, and it was a game that was full of bugs, could not be finished. Was It was a terrible game. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, was the downfall of games journalism, and we've not recovered, and Gamergate was just a symptom of that. I still no, believe that we, to this day. We we have the tiny little snippets of people doing actual proper journalism yeah. from time to time. It's, Jason Schreier being one of the very right. few examples uh, and of I an will, investigative journalism. Yeah. I don't like I mean, him as a as person. But his yeah, his yeah. talent is it, he is very good at what he does. When when he puts his mind to something that it needs to be reported on and he investigates properly, he does a good job. Like his ten thousand word article. I yeah. Think, on, uh, what what company was it? But we all know a couple of years ago. It yeah. was um, A major article that he'd done. Oh, it was on Rockstar Games. I was going to say it was the Crunch one. That That's was, Rockstar. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. Like, it was well when he puts investigated. His mind to it, he is great. Yeah, absolutely. But, he is just an idiot. Yeah, the time. I so I wouldn't hang out with idiot. him. I, I definitely wouldn't hang out with him as a person, but I can't fault his no. talent. Um, I, I'm disappointed that the fall of journalism has happened so oh. spectacularly as it has, and Gamergate has really exacerbated okay. that in a major like, major way. Again, I realize I'm on a soapbox here, and it's very very boring to the average listener. I do apologize. But this is exactly what I went into. This was the industry I went into. I went into journalism, yes. And then when I found out there was a such thing as games journalism, that's when I went into games journalism. And that was before Kane and Lynch, as that started to hit, and then Gamergate happened. I cannot tell you how heartbreaking that was for me. To sit here and be like, oh, it was always my dream to be a games journalist. I know that's cheesy. I really do. But it actually was. I've loved video games since before I could walk, even. Uh, I remember playing an Atari when I was like three years old and being absolutely mind blown. But yes, that's how old I am. But um, So the idea that we've now evolved into this media based i mean sorry corporation based media it is very upsetting to me it is it absolutely is um <laughs> Sincho says devolved yes very good um Sincho says i'm writing things in twitch chat i'm doing the journalism yeah to be fair that's basically what games journalism is now uh mike tindo says plagiarism is still plagiarism yes oof even if you wrote it yourself and then word it differently to publish it somewhere else, which leads me to my next complaint, but I'm going to read Brent's thing first. I think the Memorial Day party has kicked off at the community center, so I'm going to go check out. Sorry to dip out early. Don't worry, Brent. You no. do it. Enjoy yourself. Hopefully you there's hot, to- hot dogs. Um, Nana says, yeah, I'm not a journalist, but when I do make those big editorials, I try my best with research. Yes, always research. Lol. Now, here's my next little rant, and I do apologize. 
but sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> a lot of journalism now, games journalism, is AI based. And I will never support that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am a writer. I have been educated for many years and I paid a lot of money to be educated uh, in the way, the art of writing, because that's what it is. It is an art. Um, and to watch my whole, like, thing. Worldview. Yeah. Well, not even worldview, but my whole, like, passion. Mm -hmm. It has turned into crap. It's turned into crap. Mike Tindo says, I'm not a journalist. I never started journalism. I would say that you are a journalist, but I never studied journalism, never went to university. I am a blogger with a website. Oh, I have thoughts on that. But I still try to maintain a modicum of professional decency. Exactly. <laughs> Since Joe looks up modicum. It's one of my favorite words. Um, but here's the thing, Mike. So when I was in university, blogging was becoming a thing. Our professors told us, oh, Blogging is, it, it's going to destroy, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a, a vile thing that's going to destroy journalism. It's going to, you know, tear it down. It's going to take down the, 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 all the crap that we follow. We have so many industry standards. It's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> since just said I had a cool blog and I deleted it. Worst thing I ever did. For about two seconds, I bought that tripe because that's what it was, was tripe. And then I started to go out and read these grassroots journalists. I was finding more information about politics of the day, uh, about games, about industry stuff from these grassroots journalists than I ever found out from our corporate owned newspapers back in the US. So I'm mm -hmm. always going to applaud and laud the grassroots journalists known as bloggers. <laughs> Um, I think that that's where some of the best information comes from. Um, yep. I don't think people should be bought over by corporations. I know I'm, I'm, I'm on no. a soapbox, but it is literally, oh my goodness, since just even had monthly readers. Um, <laughs> yeah, but this is the thing though, is it's yeah. like the same principle that we're having at the moment with games journalists turning yes. around and saying YouTubers are the crapshoot of like of journalists yes. but actually like you know the fact of the matter is is that a lot of people seem to be making the content out there that people want to see and they're actually doing the the work that should be done by in by these journalists but they're you know they're not bloggers they're just people making content right? and they're actually giving you what you what you think you should hear rather than what now you know the publishers are telling them they want to hear i do think with anything any subject, not just gaming, any subject, you should have critical thinking. Your critical thinking yeah. cap turned on. As long as people are reporting with sources, I, I like that's why I don't hate Wikipedia. Like Wikipedia is not mm. allowed as a, a trusted source in in universities, or at least it wasn't when I was in university. But that blows my mind because they are sourced at the bottom. Yeah. If you've got sources and I can verify and cross check those sources, I'm what does gonna... it matter how you get your information? Exactly, exactly. Um and Hannah says, God, I hate that so much. And Danker says, Oh how I hate YouTube bashers. Some are even some are doing ten times better content, yes, than publishers themselves in all areas. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Sincho Agreed. says, Yeah, it was the same at my uni. I hated that BS so much. Yes, it was very frustrating for me. So you know what I would do? If I found something in the Wikipedia article that applied to whatever paper I was writing, I would just go to the source and then find it in its original form and then use that. And I'm like, okay, this is dumb extra step, but okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Nana says, like, I get it. Uh, Cause places like OTK suck. They had a game expo last year and it was awful. Um, but most YouTubers are fine. Honestly. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, there's some really whacked out ones, but again, no, they're, there are some out there that um, don't go by sources. They're like, yeah, just trust me, bro. You know, sort of 
those sorts exactly. of Exactly. Those who can verify and independently verify their sources and their information with other collaborators. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with those at all. I, I do like what Mike Tindo says, which is we do love our sauces. Heinz nice. 57, barbecue, sweet chili, teriyaki, etc. I do love sauces, guys. Especially hot sauce. Um, but... <laughs> Sorry, Sincho, that was good. Logan Paul. No, please don't. No. That should be I know the, he's trolling, but Jesus That should Christ. be the title of this episode. Logan Paul is a real fine No, we've generation. already got one. We've already got one. <laughs> But anyway, I, I do know, I do apologize that I got on a soapbox, but that is my um, area of expertise. Um, yeah, fine. It no is my passion. I am a writer, oh, well, you, as you know. You might also have another area of expertise. Oh, no! <laughs> More soapboxes! Um, so, Helldivers <laughs> 2 developer oh. Arrowhead Games has a new CEO. Okay, interesting. So, former Paradox Inter uh, Interactive Chief with... Uh, business development officer uh, Shams uh, Yoriani, uh, Jesus. Sure, we'll um, go with that. Is the company's new CEO replacing company founder uh, Johan Palsted uh, in his role? Uh, Palsted is will remain chief creative officer and chairman, so he has stepped down from his role chief of CEO. We'll get to onto that in a moment. Uh -huh. So speaking to GamesIndustry.biz, um, Palsted said that the um, a uh, decision to hire a new dedicated CEO will give him more time to focus on game creation. Hmm. So, uh, I have been thinking about the journey ahead for Arrowhead, the game, uh, the future games we're going to make and running the organization beyond the 120 or so developers we currently have. I realize that running an organization, organization of over 100 people to however large it is going to get, it means I will have to choose between deepening my love for the game creation or the business track. Ooh. So, Palstead explains that the massive success of Helldivers and the associated pressure of running the business led to him to explore moving away from the CEO role. Uh, reached out to Shans. Uh, we had lunch and asked him if he was able to reconsider running Arrowhead for the next decade and I needed to hire a new CEO. Would he be interested? Yoyani said, when you're talking to creators like Johan, it's not like he wants to retire. Helldivers 2 <laughs> isn't the highlight of his career. Hopefully, it's the fourth best game he ever makes. Um, oh, Sincho, you're about to get have... your wish. <laughs> um, this is the problem. Uh, yeah. They've not really helped themselves much with this quote. Bethesda has Todd Howard. <laughs> Kojima Productions has Kojima. Oh, no. Remedy has Sam Lake. <laughs> no, no, no. But when you ask who is running these companies, who is who is the CEO or managing director, you can't name oh, no. the humble servant behind the scenes, he added. So that's the setup. How are we able how do we enable Johan to make more hell divers and what I what I bring is a structure around that. Which makes sense, I think. But also please don't quote that the Bethesda has Todd Howard, because that man has run Bethesda into the ground. Well, I have thoughts on that too. Um, but no, he did. They had to be acquired by Microsoft. That's not why. But <laughs> yes, it was. I like Danker says. Denny Max were getting rid of them. Mm. Mm. Danker says you can tell Kylie's on the soapbox. She is foaming at the mouth with her views. It's true. I get very passionate about games journalism, and I get very passionate about CEOs, and there's a reason why. Uh, Mike Tinder says on a serious note, we do always try to source the original poster. Yes, which is why I stand by Mike Tindo's content. Go check it out. Um, yeah, Sincho says, I love CEO talk. It's the best theater. Well, we're about to do that because I love CEO talk too. Max so says, hot, Toad, how weird. Yes. Uh, Max Correct. says, I, I'm funny that you seem to skip that comment. I did. And Todd, we trust. Uh, Max says, The only one of them I like is Sam Lake. Sam Lake is a one in a million. I mean, Sam Lake is a, an entity. <laughs> very personable by the looks of it no he is he totally is he's totally cool probably autistic since so says soapbox hot tubs it all makes sense now it's true um uh, mike tindo says nah kylie is raving because she has rabies it's true i have nice. rave i have rabies boo, 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 boo. <laughs> anyway, poor pete has to put up with this but for those who don't know and i'm sure you do if you're a long time listener 
first time caller of this show. I'm CEO. I like to call myself director. I don't really like the title of CEO, but I am officially a CEO. Um, I Welcome am to company's house. You are. A I know. I know. I did that on purpose. Um, because you can put whatever you want in the company's house. I even put my name as Kylie Wilde. Did you know that, Pete? I did. Uh, but... uh, no, not really. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't me that told you that the, the yeah. date of birth was incorrect. I it's all incorrect. Um, yes. Um, I just wanted to see what I could get away with. Apparently, you can get away with anything. Um, but... but... Verify it. Uh-uh. At least not in Northern Ireland. They don't care. But the point is being... Um, it takes a very, very, very special person. This is not a joke. This is not me being silly. It takes a very, very special person to be a CEO, especially a CEO that is very visual out in public. Mm-hmm. So, in some way, <laughs> Mike Tindo says, Kylie is the CEO, director, secretary, tea lady, and everything in between. You're not wrong. <laughs> but... yeah, well, it's more coffee than tea, but you know. It's true um especially in between oh yeah um but uh having said that hell divers man i didn't get his name um uh, johan pelstead that he's not wrong it takes two to, it there are two jack tindo hello sounds like one of our old youtube videos i did um good to see you uh <laughs> mike says the only thing she isn't is an intern that's right i have an intern um but it does take a very special person a special type of person to be a ceo especially if you're a person who loves writing code or creating games or developing games or publishing games you're not ceo material you're just not ceos are um <laughs> Sintra says i only give interns <laughs> but uh see O's are usually the face of the company, Phil Spencer. Mm-hmm. Um, but not just that. Your whole goal is to make money. I can make money in my effing sleep. That's just okay. my like special ability. I don't know how. I've been able to do it since I was five years old. Um, you're either born to do that or you're not. So this guy is not wrong for wanting to step down because you know you are yeah. or you're not. It really is. It's a very, very black and white. You're either CEO or you're not. Um, and that's yeah, why... And he clearly enjoys the creative side exactly. of things a lot more. But that's why you'll see a lot of CEOs... Um, oh, Dad, come we'll in. Get, we'll get to that in a moment, Mike. Carry on with your point. Carry on. Which is... Carry on. Carry oh, on. yeah, on. exactly. Um, he, yeah, mm, yes, good CEO. Uh, but... Um, oh, what's his name? The Nintendo guy that stepped down before Browser. Bowser. Uh, what's his name? For, um, oh, uh, Fiza, Reggie, yes! Reggie Fiza. Yes, Fiza If you watch Reggie Fiza if you go back to his CV and you watch what he's done, he's been a CEO of, uh, I think Pizza Hut at one Pizza point. Hut yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah like a hockey team i think or something his whole career is being a ceo not being a ceo for a games company being a ceo that is a certain type of person transferable well that's my point my point is ceo is oh thank you nana reggie reggie visa me um yeah exactly mike tindo um but oh, Cynthia says, I don't know what I like more when Kylie laughs about my nonsense or the cringe in Pete's face. They're both great. Um, but, yeah. um yeah, Reggie. Oh, okay. Technically, COO, which is uh, chief operating officer. Yeah, but it's all the same animal, really. Um, you're either born to be one or you aren't, and that like. But there are exceptions to the rule, like Mike Tendo said about Satori Water. Well, at the bottom, you know, worked uh, as a developer and then worked his way up through the company to then lead. I'm absolutely, I adore him. As as we know, we've talked about it on this show. I do strongly believe he is the same type of Asperger's that I am, because we've read his book, or mm-hmm. was was the same. 
Uh, I think that he too had a gift for the for for making money, but also not being a dick. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is a rare quality. Um, it's wow. a quality. Quote, headline for the box: <laughs> Satoru Water was not a dick. Not a dick. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, which is why I pride myself on being. Um, I can make money, but I'm also not a dick. Um, whereas Lion Jim Ryan, I don't care. He's a Complete dick. dick. Absolutely, 100%. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes, exactly, Sincho, a.k.a. having a conscience. Oh, my gosh, guys, you got to go read his book. It's amazing. Um, but, anyway, long story short, this guy knew, saw the writing on the wall. He's not CEO material. You really are. It really is black and white. Mm-hmm. You are or you aren't. If you yep. are... You are a bit strange if you look at CEOs and COOs. You're a bit of a strange one. <laughs> You're a strange character. And yep. you also make money. And that is how that works. Because the thing is, Jim Ryan and what's-his-face at Activision that I can't stand. Um, Bobby, Bobby Scrotic. Yes, that one. They're despicable people. As humans. Yep. But they okay, know well, how Okay, well, that's going to segue. Money. Okay. Let's segue on to our next story. Sure. Then, because talking about people who may or may not have the ability to lead. Okay, yes. Uncharted 4 and Last of Us <laughs> creative director Neil Druckmann. Oh, who I cannot stand. Yes. Has said Naughty Dog's next title could redefine <sighs> mainstream perceptions of gaming. I cannot stand him. He's just ego. He's just a walking ego. Ah! Sincho says, Neil Drug, man. Um, <laughs> that man is a walking ego. That's another thing that you have to be careful, especially of CEOs, is, yeah, you can probably make money and you're probably a quirky, weird character like myself, but if you have an ego you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Now it says, F you, Neil Druckmann. I hate this man. Yes. I mean, there I don't you, hate uh, people. you got to laugh at me there. Well done. I don't hate people, but if I did, he'd be pretty close. Him and Bobby Kotick. And you're like thinking, well, why? Why would Druckmann be even in the same category as Kotick? I can't stand Druckmann. <laughs> mm. Go ahead, Pete. Shall we read? Yes! So the studio's parent company, Sony, used its corporate strategy meeting on Thursday to present its creative entertainment vision, uh, which it describes its long-term vision for where it wants to be in 10 years with an eye towards technological advances. In an interview published to coincide with today's event, or as the writing of the article, um, Druckmann was asked to share details about uh, a personal vision or dream project he wants to see realized. Oh, crap. Quote, I've been lucky to work on several dream projects and I'm currently excited about a new one, which is perhaps the the most thrilling yet. Oh, I hate this. Go ahead. (laughs) There's a growing appreciation for gaming that transcends all game group or age group, Uh... sorry, unlike when I was growing up. This shift is highlighted by our venture into television with The Last of Us, which I hope would bridge the gap between gamers and non gamers. Mm. Uh, The show's success has highlighted gaming illustrating the rich immersive experience it offers this visibility excites me not only for our current project but for the broader potential of gaming to cap- uh, captivate a global audience i'm eager to see how this new game resonates especially following Ooh. the success success of last of us as it could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming oh i hate this <laughs> Mm. There's so, a there's a lot more to unpack in this article. There's we'll get, so much. I I think let's let's get to that in a moment because okay. So this article was um this was published on the twenty third, so about four oh, days ago. As interesting, as when we're recording this. Yes. Uh, because a couple of days later, this came out. Uh, the Last of Us creative director Neil Druckmann has claimed that quotes attributed to him in a corporate strategy meeting were heavily edited. Oh by my Sony. god. Dick? <laughs> Absolute chicken shite. So, anyway, ah! uh, no, so earlier in the week, he published an interview. Uh, he's quoted as saying the next title could redefine mainstream perception of gaming. However, not Druckmann took to social media on Friday to claim he never made <laughs> such comments. And oh my gosh, you chicken shite! To be shite. His unredacted ah! words in full. 
suggesting that Sony's version was heavily edited to the point where the context was lost. I so I uh, can't stand him. Sony removed the so the post suggests that Sony removed the line in which the game developer, uh, game designer, stated oh, that he oh. doesn't believe games need to be movies or needs to be TV shows. He says after being executive <laughs> producer of the Last of Us exactly. TV show. You absolute dick. Anyway, absolute let's carry dick. On. Let, let's, ha let's have some more. Yes. Um, let's, let's have some more of this, shall we? Let's so, talk. Although it's not uncommon for corporate comm teams to edit oh. quotes for clarity. Shut up, NBC. You are so trying... Why are you trying to bat for him? Jesus. Anyway, um, that was an editorial. I apologize. Oh. I should read the story as is. Yeah, um, well... Uh, for clarity and brevity, <laughs> it's unusual for the subject of such a comment to publish exactly their original never. unedited words. So this uh. came from um, from Twitter, I believe. So in editing my rambling answers in a recent oh interview with Sony, gosh. some of my words, context, and intent were unfortunately lost. You chicken! Well, here's the long, here's the full long rambling answer for the final question about the oh, future I of hate games. Him. And here we go. We have the whole thing. Oh, gosh. Let me read this, including the question that was posed by said interviewer. <sighs> okay. The in so, interviewer, thank you. When I think about this question, I couldn't really obviously think of an answer. Like, I mean, there are all these technologies out there, but I couldn't really imagine, uh, like, what the future could can what? be. Why is there so many likes? It's like, so like, bad! Like, like, it's like, so like, bad! Like, like, um, but obviously now I have a clearer vision, I guess. Yeah. Oh my god, this is horrendous. Oh my gosh. Um, this is a, this is clearly a transcript of a spoken article. Yeah, this is terrible. Um, interview. So I guess this is going to be my last question. Jesus. <laughs> As we discuss future innovation, is there like a personal vision oh or dream project? you hope to see realized in the realm of entertainment at this point. Why couldn't they have just done that? <sighs> just done... Anyway, Neil Druckmann. Well, I've been lucky in that I've already exactly had danker. I got the chance to make several of my dream projects. I am working on a new one right now. Um, and it's maybe the most excited I've been for a project yet. Hmm, I wonder why. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, I can't talk about it or our bosses will get very mad at me. Mm-hmm. I um, can't stand him. And I guess, in general, there is something happening now that I think is very cool. Um, which is, there's a new appreciation for gaming that I have never seen before. Like, when I was growing up, gaming was made of... was more of a kid's thing. Uh-huh. I don't believe that for a second. Because he's got to be my age or younger. Older. He can't be older than me. He will be older. He apparently wrote the last... Well, I, uh, let's find out after this. Anyway. He didn't write The Last of Us. Let's for, let's not forget no, that. No, I'm fully... No, he, he wrote the original... A quote, the original concept. Yeah, the concept. He didn't yes, write it. I am Oof. aware... It was a anyway, woman. Let's get, anyway. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Can we skip this mind dribble? Yes. I wish I could. I think full context needs to be had before we. Ah! Um, now it's clearly for everyone. Is it though? Mm. Is it? Um, mm. But mm. it's like mm. if you're a gamer, you know about the potential games, and non gamers, they don't really know what they're missing out on. <laughs> But my hope was, when we made The Last of Us as a TV show, that we could change that. I have a lot to say about that, but go ahead. And why I became so involved with it. I wanted so badly for it to be good because I wanted this to happen. Which is like someone who will watch the show and really like it. Oh, I have so much And fall in love with say. those characters in the way that we fall in love with those characters and their story. And then realise at the end, wait... That's based on a video game, and then go and check out the game and just see the wealth of narratives and everything that's happening in the games. So now I feel like there's a kind of spotlight on gaming. And you know, Fallout just came out, and that's a big success for mm. Amazon. I have uh, so much to say! <laughs> and I find, that, I find that really exciting. Not because games need to be movies, 
or they need to be TV shows. Uh -huh. But I think it's just kind of opens the eyes of a bunch of people that just weren't aware of the kind of experiences that exist in games. I think right now we're hit, we're, we've hit a tipping point where it's about to take off where people realise. Oh my god, there's all these incredibly <laughs> incredible moving experiences in games. Um, so I'm not excited for this game. So I'm not only excited that we're make, for the game that we're making, and it's something really fresh for us, but I'm also excited to see how the world reacts to it. Because the, of The Last of Us and the success of the show, people even outside of gaming are looking to us to see what it is that we put out next. I'm very excited to see what the reaction to, for this thing will be. And I've already said too much about it. I'll stop there. So lame. So you're asking for, for my dream projects. I've been lucky to have worked on my favourite games with incredible collaborators and I'm thankful for them. Now let me say this just beforehand before you go on your social yes. again. Yes, yes. Um, this came up on Twitter mm -hmm. where it says, uh, accounts Neil Druckmann mentioned can reply. So he locked this down. Oh, F him. I can't stand him. Uh, that's not a joke and also not a secret. I cannot stand Neil Druckmann. Um, oh, I know. But There's more to unpack in the original article because I do want to get onto that in a bit. But yeah, I wanted to go through that word salad. Yeah, because that's what that was, was a word salad. Now, what I'm about to say is anecdotal. And yes, I realize anecdotal is not proper evidence. But I still think it's pretty representative representative of non-gamers. Uh, when we were at WASD, everyone take a shot. Um, <laughs> um, a, yeah, exactly, Pete. Um, uh, I, I, a member of the RGR retro gaming revival, uh, go check them out over on YouTube. We had Tim on here a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. but one of their, their other members kind of, I, I would say host, but he's not really the host, but anyway, Ollie, Ollie and I were talking, we were walking to, we were going to go have like after dinner drinks or whatever. Uh, and we were talking about non gamers. His wife is a non gamer. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally couldn't imagine marrying a non-gamer, but that's just me. <laughs> but, but she is a non-gamer. Um, he very strongly is a gamer. She watched both Last of Us and uh, Fallout. She loved both, which is not a surprise. A lot of people did. A lot of non-gamers did. Did she at any point, because I asked him, did she at any point feel the need to go pick up these games and play them? No. Mm -hmm. no she didn't and again that's anecdotal that's not representative of everyone but it's quite telling because that's not the first time i've heard that if my mother was still alive she would have watched last of us no problem probably would have watched fallout as well would she have picked up a game controller and played these games absolutely not no absolutely no. not the, the no. funny thing is, my, my dad has now asked me two times, uh -huh. have I watched Fallout? <laughs> yes. Should I watch it? And I went, yeah, you probably should. Oh, goodness. It's interesting. It's very and good. And I went, just bear in mind, it is based on a game, so there might be some stuff in there that you won't understand. I mean, that's the thing. Historically, growing up, Pete, you have to know this as well as I do. There have not been good game movies or TV shows, historically, historically speaking. Yes, even though there are some people out there who like to claim that the original Mario Brothers movie and oh, Street gosh. Fighter are actually good. No, they're terrible. No, they're, they're terrible. very bad. Raul Julia is the only thing that made Street Fighter, let's not lie. And I don't I know mean, what the abomination of uh, Mario Brothers was. It was oh, it was awful. Um, <laughs> but this, then again, even up until a few years ago, we had more terrible things coming We out. did. That's, that's kind of my point. Uh, to all of this, and again, I, I am, I am coming at this with a negative, uh, uh, vision or whatever on Neil Druckmann. He is not my favorite person. I think that he is ego led and he has, uh, trounced some of the more stronger female writers in the industry. Yeah, Amy Hennig. Thank you. Exactly. She is amazing. If you don't know who she is, please go look her up because she's written most uh... of the games that you love. Um, yeah, Uncharted. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then uh, when she left, the series faltered. 
But yeah, he he Charles pushed Ford her out. To Neil Druckmann. Yeah, <laughs> and he pushed her out. Um, so he's not my favorite person. But also to say that these television shows are going to bring players into these games, it's not. You're a player or you're not, which sounds like a player, but you know what I mean. You're a video game player or you're not, uh, especially of the older generations. They're not going to suddenly. I think the the Wii is probably our best example of, of for anyone who doesn't know. A uh, decade ago, the Wii came out, and for some reason, all of the like pensioners went crazy over the Wii. Do you remember that? Uh, Danka, send it to me because she won't be able to open it whilst. Uh, we're doing this uh, I can. yes but I'm very interested in that that's right up my alley um, but uh, outside of that weird blip that we had where pensioners are really into wee bowling um, you're either a gamer or you're not maybe that's a limited world view I would love to hear Chad's views on that but it is very strongly how I feel a TV show is not going to make especially a female Sorry, I'm just going to be very, very honest. It's not going to make a female go pick up a game controller and start playing Fallout or Last of Us. It's just not. You're either a gamer or you're not. I do believe that. Maybe it's a limited worldview, but it is how I feel. Um, oh, okay. It's, um, it's a YouTube video. I'll check that oh, out. Oh, sweet. Uh, Nana also, ag- I assume he's agreeing with me. Nana says, I agree, honestly. Um, I think that it takes a certain person to be a gamer. Uh, and I, the reason why I'm so hung up on this is because I've recently been scrolling a lot of Instagram. I don't know why I've never been into Instagram just this last week or two. I've just kind of went, oh, see a bit of doom scrolling. Mostly that. And then I was scrolling across some dude who was given like dude advice to dudes and, um, about not playing games because chicks aren't into games. Um, no. (laughs) Video game girlies. What is it? Gamer girls. If you want to call us that. Whatever the F. We like games. So we like dudes who play games. I've said this before many times on this show. Uh, It's not a negative to us. But having said that, I do know that the larger world view views gamers as something negative as something beneath as something lower so i'm sorry neil Druckmann, making a great tv show and yes i do enjoy the last of us except for the last two episodes which are extremely rushed and i love fallout that's not gonna make people go out and suddenly become gamers it's just not Gaming and television are separate things. Yes, it's great that they transform those ideas into very strong storytelling, which I love. But they're very, mm. very separate things. You're not going to make uh, gamers out of out of entertainment watchers. That's just how I feel. Chat, I would love to see your thoughts on that. But that is absolutely how I feel. What do you think, Pete? Uh, it's much like the same way that trying to get a gamer to enjoy a non-interactive medium to some degree. It's always going to be quite difficult to break down that barrier. Um, you know, it, it's generally why... No worries, Stanker. Yeah, you know, it's why we tend to enjoy playing the experience because yes. we get a lot more thrill out of the entertainment side of it than the interactivity. Watching something, especially something like The Last of Us, whilst it is very well made to some degree... Yeah. It is a carbon copy of the game. So if you have actually played right. the game, you're not going to expect anything different from there, apart from there are different people who are playing the characters that you already know, and that's it. You know, there, the there's a little, it is a, it, little It's a side but... story sort of mm-hmm. elsewhere within the universe mm-hmm. that you know already. It might not be as enjoyable because you get a lot of the hints, you get a lot of the the callbacks and a lot of the, the, um, uh, the Easter eggs. Yes. But actually, yes. a lot of what you get from playing the game is you get that lived experience that you can go and talk to your friends about. And say, exactly. oh, I did this. And, oh, I did this. Oh, I might have done this instead. Especially with a game like Fallout. Like, like for instance, like Fallout 3. Yeah. You obviously probably would have, you know, rescued Megaton. You wouldn't have yes. thrown the bomb up. I would have rescued whereas Megaton. Recently, I did rescue recently, Megaton. I just... 
whereas recently yes. I just went and blew it up just because I it's felt true. like it and we had completely different experiences. Like, Absolutely. It was cool as hell, to be honest. Welcome back, uh, Tanker. Yeah. Yeah, but it was that's where it's always going to be quite hard, which is why video games, movies, and TV shows have always struggled to succeed over the years. That right. and crappy writing. But, you well, know. that that's the thing. Now, that's the thing. Both The Last of Us and Fallout have had great writers. And you know how I know this? I mean, I know this anyway. Everyone take a look at The Witcher. Blech. It's crap. Why is it crap? And I mean the show, obviously. Uh, it's crap because someone had an agenda. I mean, you can... You, you, that's definitely part of it, which affected the writing. The writing is crap. And how could you mess up the world of The Witcher? That is like a beautiful fantasy world. Here we are after post-Game of Thrones in that terrible mm -hmm. eighth season, which I refuse to watch even now. Um, and... They ruined the Witcher. They had the perfect Cavill was cast perfectly. He knew uh, the stuff. Yeah, Nana, not necessary, Teresa. Cavill left. That's the answer. No, that he it was bad even when he was there because yeah. they wouldn't listen to. They wouldn't who listen to him. All. Like there's video. He had to go in and remake the scene, the death scene yes! of Roach himself. After much fighting with Lauren Histrich about it. Oh, don't get me started. But that point, my Absolutely point being... Absolutely ridiculous. My point being, bad writing will kill a series. They had all of the factors in place. The Witcher should have been amazing. Should have been, I would say, Fallout levels. I, I absolutely think that. It should have been. But the writing killed it. Absolutely killed it. Um, but also, had it been good... Uh, Nana says, God, I hope his Warhammer film works out. If they listen to him, it will. But had The Witcher been good, would The Witcher have gotten people playing video games? No. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. You either play video games or you don't. Mm -hmm. Nothing's yep. going to make... You... Now, a lot of people will say, oh, Fallout made me go download Fallout 76 or start playing Fallout 4. But they were already video gamers. Yeah, they were. You don't, it's like me. just, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so I'm sorry, I don't think that these are jumping on points for non-gamers. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I Maybe I'm jaded, maybe I'm cynical. Yes, I am all of those things. Yes, you're old too. <laughs> I am like old. Me. I'm like, ah, oh, get off my lawn, non-gamers. <laughs> what? But having said that, I don't think that these are jumping on points. I really don't. Nana says, or at least he gets to be Bond. He might have some cool ideas there. I yeah, would love said, him I to hope be Bond. I hope the Warhammer film works out. Yeah. I really don't think the Warhammer film is going to work now, see, after everything the Games Workshop has been doing to Warhammer recently. Mm, My all, God. All I care is that they're Skavens, and that's Sincho's key to go, Kylie, there are no Skavens in Warhammer whatever version. I love Skavens. Um, anyway, uh, Nana says Witcher 3 was the highest played game when the first series came out. So that's an expectation. Yes, I agree. But it would also be... <laughs> but Sincho, you have to tell me the Skavens lore because I always say the wrong thing. I love Skavens. Um, but anyway. with the Witcher, Witcher 3 being, you know, the highest played game, that's people who already were gamers. Is how I personally believe. I don't know if Pete disagrees, but that is how I think. Don't disagree. Sorry, yeah. I want to. I'm just thinking with time, we might need to wrap. Yeah, this I know. Soon. We're gonna have to wrap this up uh, soon uh, because I am not missing Max. Okay. No, we've got one. More run story through that story. <laughs> so let's just run through this story. Yes. Console wars are over, guys. It's finished. It's oh, done. Oh goodness! Yay! Woohoo! Boo, 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 boo. Well, at least the original console war is over and done. <laughs> what is that? Sega versus Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, even earlier than that. Atari oh, wow. acquired the Intellivision brand, ah! effectively ending the first console rivalry. No way. Dating back to the 1970s. Oh my gosh, that's cray cray. So Atari announced today, as of, well, this is a few days obviously ago, uh, that it acquired the television brand and certain games from Television Entertainment LLC, which has been working on the Amico console for another uh, number of years. The deal will not, however, include the Amico. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah. 
Instead, in tele Weird. in television entertainment LLC will continue as a separate rebranded company and will continue working on the Amico, using a license from Atari to release the Intellivision games on it. Oh my gosh! Also, and I yes, Sencho literally <laughs> just just put the thing that I wanted to say because the Amico is dog shit. <laughs> Well, I I also like what he said, which is I was in UMC. You sorry, mean Tommy Tallarico. Sorry, Sancho. Yes, UMVC three training mode. For some reason, I want Skaven in The Witcher now. How cool would that be? First of all, haha. <laughs> um, and yes, of course, he said because the amico is dog poop. Sancho says, "Then what's that clown's name who runs it?" And then Danker uh, says, "Tommy Tallarico." Yeah. Uh, Danker says, if it ever sees the light of day. Continue it on, won't. Pete. We gotta get yeah, through this. Won't. We gotta get yeah, over to Max. It, Woo! Yeah, yeah, I'm fully aware. <laughs> I've been trying to wrap this up for bloody ages. I know, I've been, been on... Wrong city. I know! What is... Jesus. That's so crazy! I'm not usually that ranty, but yes, go ahead. Maybe ranty anti! Stories. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Intellivision, Intelligent Television Console, was released by Mattel in 1979. Wow! For starting the first ever video game console war, going head to head with the Atari VCS, late renamed the 2600. Woo! Now that both brands are under the same company, the rivalry is essentially over. So, this is a quote Uniting Atari and television after 45 years ends <laughs> the longest running console war in history, uh, said uh, Mike Mika, uh, uh. studio head at Atari owned Digital Eclipse. So, uh, Atari CEO and Chairman Wade Rosson added, The freaking hell is this? <laughs> really, really incredibly poor formatting on this quote. Oh, dear. It's diff completely different text size and format to the mm -hmm. rest of it. Um, this was a very rare opportunity to unite <laughs> former competitors and bring uh, together fans of Atari and television and the golden age gaming. The acquisition means Atari now owns the rights to more than 200 titles from television's portfolio, as well as in television's branding and trademarks. Interesting. And that's it. Let's just leave it. Or we can have a quote from Intellivision okay, CEO do Phil Adam. <laughs> okay. Uh, Atari has been a valuable partner, and we have every confidence they will be resp a responsible steward for the storied television brand. Uh, we look forward to our expanded collaboration and bringing a broad array of new Atari and television titles to the Amico, an Amico home family console, family gaming cons, uh, platforms. Christ. <laughs> Never a thing that I thought I'd ever say. I know, right? Well, I like what Sincho says, which is the Amico having a console war against itself. <laughs> yeah, because Tommy Tallarico keeps absolutely taking it out on himself and every single person who calls it a crapshoot. Yeah, or exactly. A scam. Well, I, mm. Because it is a scam. Is it? The thing hasn't seen the light of day. It's been crowdfunded for years, but yet it's never come out. All right, yeah, I could see that as a... I'm pretty sure that Slopes did a whole entire documentary on it. I believe that he did. Actually, shout out to Slopes, DJ Slopes. Uh, there you go. Yeah, Max see, Max it. said he did. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah. Um, he mentioned it on Twitter this morning, as a matter of fact. Lol. Uh, According to right. Max. Two seconds. I'll go and find the quote. Okay, do that. You probably need to put it in the show notes. But anyway, I don't actually have much to rant about this one, mostly because I'm very aware of time. Uh, but sound off in the comments your thoughts and feels about this because holy crap, like that's insane. 1979, right, so he, man. So as of um, this morning from DJ Slope, <laughs> uh, every morning I wake up with a completely random song stuck in my head. Today's song went like this. No future for Amico in the hands of Tommy Tallarico. <laughs> Lol. I, I literally not watched my own my own video in like i don't know a year oh my gosh yeah so everyone go check that out um uh, yeah just be aware though my god it is a long long ass video though it's nearly four hours okay so it's a two-parter possibly a four-parter if you have adhd uh max says it's great or, or a six-parter <clears throat> if it's if you really have bad adhd yes that's true uh, that's crazy to me for several reasons. How the heck does Amico and also Atari still exist? 
Uh, Max says, yeah, he did a proper documentary on it, which as we he were did, speaking about earlier is exactly what we're looking for. Grassroots journalism with yeah. verified sources. I'm pretty sure actually as well, we were discussing this at WASD that he did a proper, oh yeah, a better documentary than the actual documentary mm -hmm. itself. Oh yes. A hundred percent. Um, Mm, don't get me started on that one either. Because uh, I'll go on another soapbox. Um, yeah, Max says not the first Correct. time he has done that. That's true. It's funny because there, uh, side note, there's a lot of things that, it's weird that are connected to Max that I have been a longtime fan of, which DJ Slopes would be one of them. Ashens and Etrots would be another. And then I find out they're connected to Max. It's just, it blows my mind. It's it's weird. Uh, but we have mentioned DJ Slopes on this show before. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of times, actually. So go yeah, check him we, out. Uh, we sh you shall. Uh, we, we said hello to him at WASD. Oh, well, we did. Briefly. We did. Yes, 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 yes. A very busy man. Uh, yes. But... A very thorough. Very nice guy. Accurate. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, Max says, I would count Slopes and Ed as friends. I think that you should. Uh, I definitely think that they view you as a friend. Um, which, again, blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Because these are people I have watched. Um, Ashens, I don't know as well, but he's a lovely guy. For those who don't know, <laughs> I was actually thinking about this earlier. So Ashens is a YouTuber slash streamer that I have followed for at least a decade now. Me too. Um, yeah, exactly. And the whole reason I ever checked out Mags' stuff after he was a guest on our show was because he said that Ashens rated him. And my thought was, if Ashens rated him, he must be a good guy. And he was. Uh, since he says it must be hard, only doing events at Angle Cap. Can't even type. Okay. <laughs> But uh, put down the controller and type properly. That's right, Sancho. Do that. Um, but I've actually nearly finished a bottle of wine. I cannot believe that. And we're at exactly two hours, folks. Well, two recording hours. nearly an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah, I know, but I mean total. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to probably wrap this up here, unless uh, Pete, you have an opinion. And chat, if you want to add anything to this discussion, I still cannot believe that. Atari and Amico exist as entities. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got nothing I really want to add, add to do with this. Like, it, it's a bit of a strange one. When I heard it, I was like, why? Right, exactly. Also, I, yeah, it's just relics of the age old past that just keep <laughs> lingering around. There's not really much else that needs to be said about it. It's just like, okay, well. So yeah. long as the brands keep going, I guess. I guess. Degree, then fine. But <laughs> Atari have sort of lost their appeal over the last Absolutely. 20 years. Um, and, uh, I mean, don't think anyone even remembers, like, outside of our age, what the bloody Intellivision even was. I know, exactly. Um, yeah, basically, uh, Danker says, nope, I'm pretty much done. Uh, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this up. We'll have a little talkie talkie afterwards and then we'll all head over to Mags' stream. Um, because that's well, where... we've got to wrap the show up first. Well, I know it's, it's gonna wrap it up. Um, oh, sweet. Uh, yes. Um, oh, uh, Nana, if you're still there, can you do a shout out for Ashens? That is absolutely a very good call on Danker's part. Um, if not, I'll try and do a shout out. Um, if I can remember how to do that, <laughs> I think it's exclamation SO Ashens. Anyway, Nana, let me know if you're still there, and then I will shout us out. I will shout Ashens out before we end. Um, but we do have one thing we do have to talk about. It's this thing that's happening in August, Pete. Do you remember? It's not my birthday because my birthday already birthday. happened. It's not your birthday because your birthday's on Valentine's. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you so thanks much, for Nana. Everyone again. Yeah, I know, but, you know, that's how that goes. Uh, so, Pete, what could be happening in August that please go um, buy a ticket using our code? <laughs> I, I don't know. Some some event run by some guy. Some guy? Just some guy. Some young guy. Just... Uh, <laughs> the cream of some young guy. Yeah, I was going to say, please do not make me say that. 
yeah, I've not heard of it as well, but I keep yeah. getting told it's some event called Timeless yeah. Gaming Yes, Expo. Con- convention. convention. Timeless Gaming Convention yeah. Expo. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Matt just... says, oh, the thing that Dave's running. Yes, it's not Dave that's running it. No. It might be someone called Mags. What, what was it? What was it timely? timely? <laughs> if Matt, I mean, if Dave is running it, he calls it time more. But the important part. No, I'm, I'm, no, in all being serious, this yeah, timeless gaming convention on the yes. 14th of August, arcade club in Berry, which was actually rated <laughs> the sec- number two best arcade in Europe. I know. Very recently. Which is amazing. So I cannot yeah, wait. 14th, 14th of August, uh, arcade club in Berry mm-hmm. in the north. <laughs> I mean, I don't usually condone going to North, but it's worth going for that reason. No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Um, I'm a filthy subner, so I can't say anything. Um, yeah, 14th of August. Uh, be there. Please use code RAPID24 for 15% yeah. off because of it, your tickets. I really want to look cool in front of Mags. You have to make me look cool. Please use that code. No, Nothing will ever make you look cool. I have to be cool in front of Mags, of all people. Uh, Mike Tindis is timely. will be Kylie when the doors open. You better believe it. Uh, me and Pete have VIP tickets. So, hmm. <laughs> I, I could say but more. We had to pay for. Well, yes. Uh, of course we did. Um, and things are on the move. There is a makeover. Denker is correct. Uh, that will be an interesting Sancho thing. Sancho is also correct. Uh, hold on. Early bird catches the worm, that sort of thing. Oh. I may have already caught that worm. Uh, Sintra says the ship sailed out. <laughs> there we go, Kylie. Mike Tindo says, or rather, the early Kylie catches the mags. Um, <laughs> you're a groupie at this point. Oh, no, there is a group of go. only one. I will be wearing my digital T-shirt. So with Mags's face on it, that says. I mean, I which is which is ben. astonishing because you could be using that as free promotion for our show, but you will not. I'll flip between both. I've already been asked to no, be. No, you won't. I've already been asked to be Lady Dimitrescu for cosplay. Uh, <laughs> Mike Tindo says, "Gird your loin, Mags." Oh, that ship has sailed. Um, but uh, I have been asked to be Lady Dimitrescu for cosplay, so I'll probably do that. Such as says, Max, you know this is record. This is not the after show banter. This is on the show forever. Max will be on there for 8.5 out of 10 seconds. Uh, then it switches to rapid reviews for 1.5. We will be doing a live show from there. Uh, the, in all seriousness, we actually know several people that are going. And it's going to be amazing and fun. We will try and do something that night. Oh, so we as, definitely will. Uh, yeah, so long as you don't get too drunk. I can't promise that. There will be alcohol Not involved. Uh, and me dressed as Lady Dimitrescu. You think what could happen? Well, it might it might have to be a wrap-up one before we check out of our hotel at, mm. like, God knows what time in the morning. Yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, but, um, Definitely not, then. Yes. Uh, let's see. After reviews, after dark. Hey, Danker, we have threatened that before. Um <laughs> No, but we actually, we met so many people at WASD that are going to Timeless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we are going to be uh, at all hurting for guests and live shows. I think we have tons of content. Um, not that it's a rapid reviews thing, but this is our show. Uh, just come over there and see. We're going to have so much fun. It just is going to be fun. Uh, Sintra is more like into the dark. Um, yeah. Yeah, people might be disappointed. <laughs> Maybe. I've been around Max when he's in work mode. You might be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, it'll be me talking to you the whole time. Uh-huh. Like, Who's ignoring me? Yep. And um, people are going to be very confused. Uh, but that's how that goes. Uh, but anyway, uh, so please do buy your tickets using our code because I want to look really cool. So, Nana, please buy your tickets using our code. Yeah, and Nana, I did obviously send you the message about <laughs> travel arrangements. So, let yes. me know. And it will be fun if you show up. I promise, promise, promise. Me and Pete 
are going to, well, I was going to say, we're going to give you a good time, but that's not really, I mean, like, obviously, timeless itself is going to be good, but if you're the type of person who is very intimidated by crowds or scared of people, and some of our friends are, uh, you can cling to me all you want. That's what I'm there for. I've already got, like, yep. three people who have said, I'm very worried, I'm very scared of crowds, I'm very uncomfortable, and I said, dudes and dudettes you cling to me that's what i'm there for uh, I'm, I'm there for that as well just come and yeah. play games with me It'll be yeah fun. exactly i am there for everyone if you're scared i'm there don't worry do not worry it's gonna be a fun time uh since just says crowds are afraid of me mike tinda says into the dank more like dank memes are a given when it comes to kylie oh i do love me some right. dank memes i am a, i have a weakness for dank memes but <laughs> um we're going to wrap this up and we're going to take a very, 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 very short uh, post show. And then yep. uh, we're going to end anything it. Anything else you've forgotten? To that. I don't think so. I just really want people to use our code. Are you sure? Oh, no. What? What, Pete? So, just to let people know, uh huh. there will be no show next week. Oh, that's right. I did forget, Pete. Go ahead. Yes, I'm not telling you the reason why there is no show. Because... I don't want to. There you but there's go. no show next week, and there's possibly not one the week after either. Yeah, and then there's the only thing. The only thing that is happening is that the Xbox showcase on the 9th of so... June that we <laughs> we may or may not be live streaming. I don't know yet. We haven't discussed it. Yeah, we probably are because after that things get a little bit dicey because two weeks after that. Me and Max leave for TwitchCon, with which there will be no show. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there will be a week at the end of the month where, a month, end of June, where there will be no show as well. So, yeah. Yeah, for the next, let's say possibly for the next two weeks, there isn't something. Yeah. So, please come visit us. Sinchez is blasphemy. Also, please check out, also, please check out the Never Watchers. Yes. Uh, that was the thing that I forgot. Pete's other podcast. My podcast is on hiatus. Um, I'm going to come up with something funny and I'll do something. So come check out my channel. Uh, Dagger says, so hope the live watch along happens. Yeah, it will. It, it, yeah, so you let can me say shit about <laughs> let Xbox me the whole time. Say it more than likely will because we have often done uh, watch alongs with the Xbox yeah. showcase. And it's only, the, it's only the Xbox one that Kylie seems to ever want I, to do. I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> we never. Oh, we have done the PlayStation. Uh, we did a state of play once, didn't we? We did with our third co-host, Mike Tindo. Says what? 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 How am I supposed to spend my Sunday nights now? It's only temporary. Um, Wait. yeah. Uh, since this is a perfect time for some streams, <laughs> Kylie. Look, I will say this. I will say this. A month ago, when Mags was here in uh, Belfast. We did have, well, we had a jacuzzi in our room. And he said no. So, there you go. Human soup. <laughs> I've got the influence there. I think so. Um, and then Danker says that weekend is getting packed. Yes. I tend to says, what time is the Nintendo one? Pete, I could always join you for, ooh, now that's I an idea. You know. That I'll is an know. idea. Uh, Sentra says... It depends Jack, on, obviously, what's Jack going Uzi. on. I'll message you privately as to why there isn't a show and whether or not we can organize something in that time. Mag says true story, which I think is in Good regards man. to me saying there is a jacuzzi and he said no. Uh, Human <laughs> soup. Dakers. But, I mean, it's me and Max. That wouldn't be... Anyway. Dakers said late June is the rumor currently. And Mike Tindo says no worries, mate. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. But we're going to wrap this portion up because we mm -hmm. need to get over to Mag's stream. Uh, Mag says, I think the Nintendo one, we are waiting on date and times, aren't we? Yes. Uh, yes but we they said they are doing it. Yeah, I think it's definite as yeah, far as I understand. They've, confir they've confirmed the June But they haven't. Thing, but, yeah. But no Switch 2 stuff. I think you and Mike Tindo doing that live reaction would be great. Um, okay, yeah. It'd be like two fanboys overreacting mm -hmm. about nothing. Yeah, but I mean, look at all of our past Xbox streams. That's me. Hey, 
Anyway, we're yeah, going to wrap it is, this up. And then it's me turning around going, there's I no know. gameplay. There's no gameplay. I know. It's exactly what it is. You say that to me and Kieran. There's no gameplay. I mean, Kieran are like crying because Halo Infinite was much, <laughs> And we're both like tear streaming. And you're like, there's like no that. gameplay. There's no gameplay. <laughs> We're just like weeping. Anyway, yeah. uh, since this is all be the hater in chat to counter the weight. Yeah, exactly. And then That's Mike Tindis is most likely Pete. Okay, we're going to wrap this portion up. Please stick around for the after portion and then everyone go check out Max. Um, <laughs> Mike Tindis says, or we could be completely stoic because there's no games we are interested in. That too could happen. Anyway, yes. thank you Let's go. so much for joining us this evening which has mostly been me on soapboxes ranting i do apologize it happens ever so often pete picks stories that you know tweak me uh yeah we're thinking about that Denker. don't worry uh, I know I'm, I'm ignoring. Okay, we uh, even say it's in the bloody <laughs> thing. Read after record for Christ's sake. <laughs> anyway, right, that's the end. Thank of the you show. so we'll much for joining us. You we will see you week. and talk to you in a few weeks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good fucking god. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the Never thing. Never put something Here's in the, the chat if you don't want it to be read with Kylie. For f <laughs> yeah, that is a well-known thing. I will read it. I am Ron Burgundy. I am Ron Burgundy. Um, but <laughs> yes, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm debating because I've never missed an intro of Max's in my life, and I'm kind of scared to miss his intro. I mean, I guess we could raid right at two minutes, right? But that also means being on for another 25 minutes. Yeah, I don't think I can... And I... the funny thing is we do need to discuss some plans as well oh. beforehand. So probably a good idea. Well, I just drink like, an entire bottle of wine. Yeah, so you're going to need time to pee. I have to pee. <laughs> I have to pee before Max's show. And then I'm going to go be rude in his chat because I don't think I've ever been drunk in Mags' chat before. Oh, also, I have to say, um, Mags is playing, in case we don't raid him and probably won't because I do have to pee really bad. Mags is playing uh, System Shock, which is an amazing game and is the spiritual predecessor of Bioshock. Not a joke. Uh... <laughs> Chad is cracking me up right now. Uh, so, Nana says, great episode. Thank you so much, Nana. I know it was mostly you, me Nana. ranting. Uh, those do happen. Yeah, that's why it's a great episode. It's always funny. I hope so. Uh, I do. It does happen ever so often. Uh, Mike says, come on, folks. Let's go hackle mags over at his stream. Yes, you better. Get your booties over there. Because uh, it is... Get uh, the tomatoes at the ready. Yes. Uh, Sintra says, damn, you got me with Bioshock Infinite. Dinger says, Kylie, I know. I just read if it's in my face. I just read it. Um, and then uh, Max says, you got 25 minutes. You're fine, which is good because I do have to pee in about 10 minutes. I'm not going to no, make it. No, we've got 23 minutes, actually. Yeah, but I'm not going to make it another 10. <laughs> uh, Nana, thank you so much for being our amazing mod and posting all of that. Uh, and thanks to Brent as well when he was here because he, you know. Oh, yes, yes. absolutely. He's a mod as well. He is, and thank him very, very, very much. Uh, and I don't blame him for leaving for Memorial Day stuff. Uh, Mag says, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. do that. Uh, Denker says, just tell people to hold on. Mag says, I'm not fussed about the raid, but I appreciate the thought. The thought is there, but I will be there before the raid. Before, before. Because I'll have a heart attack. The mind is willing, but the body <laughs> is not quite there. The, the body is flingy, spongy and weak. Uh, this is also, thank you for liking my tweet, Pete. Ooh. Um, oh, yeah, it was a good one. It's interesting. We've been talking about how shit Neil Druckmann is. Oh, yes, 100%. Uh, Centro says, We're not good enough for you, Mag! Uh, Danker says, And game code up for grabs, too. Yes, that's right! There is a giveaway. Holy crap! There is a giveaway of System Shock. Please go and watch because holy crap, you do want that game. Again, spiritual predecessor to Bioshock. One of my favorite games. 
Uh, well, Bioshock's my favorite game, but I do actually love System Shock. Uh, Max says, if that's what you take from that message, you do you. <laughs> ah, very good, very good. Uh, our chat is great, and I love you guys. Um, and now you, you have to go and be Mags's chat. Isn't that weird? How weird is that? Like, our chat is also Mags's chat. Yeah, the funny thing is, you do more promoting of Mags's channel and his shows than you do. Of course do they own. do. Of course they do. There's reasons for that. Sanjo says, Mags, can you please tell her to get in line and actually promote our own freaking show? Because she won't listen to me. People, I do enough for that by turning up into your chat. So get the shout out. Hey, you're community member of the month, so you have. That's to, why. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Sanjo says, "I'll do me, Mags. I will." <laughs> Love that since show. That's amazing. Uh, Mag says, I know, right? Mike did not say self love. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Um, but yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Pete is actually community member of the month. Not sure how. I did fuck all to deserve it. I know, but I love it because he's under the rapid reviews header. Which means Rapid Reviews gets a shout out. I know. Uh, I still did fuck all to deserve it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just showed up. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> Max says, sounds uh, painful to Sincho uh, with the I'll do me. Uh, and he says, all about that agility. I, wrote, I rolled an 18. You didn't roll a crit 20? Because, you know, you might as well. If you're going to roll an 18, roll a crit 20. But you guys are amazing. Get your last minute thoughts in. It's my stat. Oh, okay. Sorry. You're right, Sincho. Not a check. Poof. Um, D&D Jesus. <laughs> I love what that Max said. I rolled snake eyes. Hell yeah. And then Sincho says, nerd down. <laughs> Fuck D&D, by the way. I love D and D. I'm not gonna lie. I have not played in years. Yeah, it's been a while. I know. We talked about doing it online. Remember, we were gonna do it for a bit. Oh there. yeah, I know. And I uh -huh. told you the reasons why that won't happen. I know, and it made sense. It really did. Uh, Dangerous is guy. I'm cracking up. Good mission accomplished. Uh, since just says let's do Max. Hey, some of us already have, but that's not the point. Um, the point is, I actually have to pee. Uh, but please do, in all seriousness, go join us over at Middle Age Gamer Guy UK Stream, uh, because he is streaming System Shock. That's not a joke or me being silly. He really is, and that's an amazing game. <laughs> so just, that's just a reminder that this is Rapid Reviews. Yeah, but you guys already know that. That's why you're Thanks, here. Thanks, I appreciate you actually giving <laughs> us a shout out on our own channel, our own chat. But you guys already know that. I mean, I mean, this is literally <laughs> at this point. It is just the subsidiary of the Mags channel, isn't it? So just in case you were confused like me, I can't help it. I've never said that you could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this would be no it just would be nice if you turn around and said, "Oh, by the way, uh, I do a show." <laughs> Mike says, "I'm not to blame for this. Just saying." Well, I never blamed you once for this, Mags. Kind of in a in way. In fact, you if are. anything, Mike Tendo's to blame for this. If well, that's true. But also, if Mags Damn wasn't you, so Mike. hot, then this wouldn't have happened. So it is Mags's fault. So it just says, I feel like I'm slowly being brainwashed. Yes, go watch Mags. Go watch Mags. It's after this show. Uh, yeah, Mags says, just covering just myself. Covering myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, wait, I'm just waiting for, um, you know. <laughs> okay. What was it? Like an aggressive buyout by Mags's story. <laughs> that's true. We're an embracer group now. Um, but yeah. yeah, Mags is now the embracer group of Twitch streamers. <laughs> He's going to take all these properties on at some point. Very good. Uh, exactly. It's fucking repop out for me money. If they offer him money. Uh, exactly. Sincho. Don't take the money. Don't take the money. Ah, <laughs> very good. We all know how it went, Max. It was a live on Twitch, that spinoff show. God, I got to rewatch that. Yes. 
Sincho, it's so good. I rewatch it from time to time, except for the one that we axed and doesn't exist. It is so funny. Uh, I'll buy EGX. Fuck them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. First of all, if Max bought AGX, that would be fucking amazing first of all it would be would it? A, yes it would be a no, I mean, success it would be better than what it is now that's exactly it mike tindo says yes please do cover yourself max there would be no indecent exposure here i don't know man i have to pee we need to wrap this up okay yes, and we got shit we need to talk about quickly as well. we do uh yeah it would be still be shit no it wouldn't max it would be a fucking amazing event uh but it would be better well, if i it bought would. it it would be a shit show right whereas so than what it is now but max has like experience and is amazing and is also hot which has nothing to do with his ability to run egx but i don't care uh but anyway since so just says it would be actually exactly 8.5 kali no more than no less it's true we're gonna wrap this up i have to pee and i want to get my meeting done with pete so i can be over at mags and see all of you lovely people and your lovely faces i cannot wait to see them and say hi to you um because you're <laughs> it just says rapid release <laughs> um anyway come watch system shock um and come make jokes with me um and talk about how hot mags is that's cool I'm okay with that. Uh, but anyway, let's finish this up because I really have to pee. My bladder is not as big as a bottle of wine, by the way. Anyway, thank you so much. Sincho so says you got that covered. Yeah, you better believe me I do. No one else has to. It's true. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Go for real. Join us over at uh, Middle Age Gamer Guy UK's stream. That's not a joke. He is streaming System Shock. Also, not a joke. And we all will be over there having fun. Uh, also, Pete is community member of the month under Rapper Reviews. When will it end? When will it end? It's ending now because I have to pee. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next sometime in the future.